Pride sponsor of Dave Campbell Texas Football Team of the Week Road Tour. As a part of tonight's celebration, riders Lauren Mendia and $250 in tuition assistance, compliment of Ozarka for their leadership in the classroom. Let's give Norman and Ivory a round of applause. Be sure to visit the Dave Campbell's and Ozarka tent to nominate your school for the Team of the Week Award. Good, e good evening. Good evening and welcome to the sold out Memorial Stadium for the 62nd and last time the Rider Raiders will battle Wichita Falls High School Coyotes on Joe Golding Field. I'm Dustin Holly, joined by Jonathan Hall from the Times Record News and Rasan Bell, old high and MSU great quarterback. And we'll bring you all the action tonight on the Wichita Falls ISD YouTube channel. And guys, the crowd is filling in. The teams are finished warming up. We have fight songs going on. This stadium is electric. Is this the atmosphere you thought we'd have tonight for this one? Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you knew you were going to get something special, and we knew that. And, and uh, you know, you've, you've probably been hearing us getting a little bit excited about it. As apparently, we had a hot mic <laughs> as we were sitting there waiting to, to get ready for it. It's a little fired up. But, man, I've been fired up for it all week. I've uh, been preparing for it all week. And uh, you know, I'm actually curious about Coach Bell because he's an old high grad. He played in this game. I mean, what, what, are, what are you thinking right now, Coach? You know, uh, you know, they're actually playing this game. Uh, it, it's just an un unbelievable feeling. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I played in, in front of, you know, in this game more fans than I ever did at MSU. So it's yeah. a, it's a really big deal. Really what do you, big what do you, deal. I'm just curious. What do you remember about that game? Well, we're winning first and foremost. <laughs> uh, you know, Ryder Ryder had a a couple of years before they went on 12 in a row, and uh, my brother in the class was actually the guys who who ended that streak. So we kind of kept that kept that thing going. You know, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Just winning the game is is what I remember first and foremost. And one of the big questions tonight is actually quarterback play for both teams. Both enter with new quarterbacks. Quarterbacks Zage Gravit for Old High and Joe Castles for Ryder. But you kind of say it's a family business for both of these guys. They're both coaches' kids. They yeah. both have older brothers play in this game, and they've been around this rivalry since they were young kids. So tell us about these two starters and what we'll see tonight. Well, Zage Gravit's a little bit of a surprising starting quarterback for the Coyotes. I I, I don't think he was necessarily completely on the radar uh, for the for the, even the coaching staff. I mean, Coach Freeman basically told me as much. It's like they were not expecting a quarterback battle uh, b 
between him and, and Cameron Jones, and, and so it, it, they went into it and, and they made a decision after the Hershey scrimmage, which Coach Bell was a part of, you know, being a, the, the OC there at uh, at Hershey. And see, and hold on, Chad Johnson's calling me, so we may not be in there. Hey, what's up? We're not in there. Yeah, we're talking. <laughs> live, live, uh, live broadcast. You just never know. Hey, when the when the producer calls, you answer. That's that's the one thing about this. When the producer calls, you answer. But, uh. But going back to it, you know, Zage was a little bit of surprise, and he come in, he won that quarterback battle in her in the fall camp, and, and then yeah, you look at Joe Castles, who got varsity experience last year, playing at Archer City, uh, and and had you know a solid year there, playing Class Two A level. Now, Two A ball is a lot different than Five A football. It is a lot different. It's a lot different than Four A football, if you will, since that's what the Coyotes are now, and playing in this game for your first 5A football experience? Oh man, listen, Archer City Winthors, great rivalry, great rivalry. Old High Rider, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. What did you see last week out of them, Coach? I know Hershey got to scrimmage and all that. I know it's just scrimmage. What did you see out of the old high quarterbacks? Well, well, one thing uh, about Gravit, he, he's he's sneakily athletic. Mm -hmm. I mean, the guy does a lot with his legs. Uh, he can move around, moves around well in the pocket, uh, and, and he can sling it. He can sling it as well. Yeah, and he is. I, I'm surprised at well he ran, and he played receiver. You know, he was he was receiver for them last year, and so you know the athleticism is there to give them an extra uh, you know, presence there in the running game. And and Old High's already got a good running game anyway with the backs that they have. Old High's coming down the tunnel here. One of the guys, Castle, is going to be trying to find tonight is Tyrone Morgan. He'll play on both sides of the ball tonight and could have a huge impact on this game. The senior had 10 touchdowns and five interceptions last year. What role do the Raiders need to have Morgan play tonight in this well, game? I think you're going to see him play a multifaceted role. You're going to see him line up all over the field. Uh, on the on the TV, he's listed as a starter in the slot receiver spot. He's not listed as a starter at running back. But you're going to see him at running back some more. He is, I would say, the most electric athlete on the field tonight, period, on the other side of the ball. And he's a great corner. He's turned into a true cover corner who can shut down the receiver on that side. And I think that's going to be an interesting matchup, too, because you're going to see him up against Keandre Fleet some tonight. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Old High may have a couple answers for this. Uh, I think it's all senior starters tonight for the rider defense. But you have sophomore running back Eric Powell as the lead back this year. And then Keandre Fleek's a 6'5 receiver at eight touchdowns last year. Looking good in a couple scrimmages. And both these guys were on the uh, Times Record News, whatever, preseason super team. Yeah. Coach, what did you see out of these guys last week? I said, I know we're going back to that scrimmage, but you got to see him up close last week. Uh, yeah, uh, Powell, Powell is, is a beast of, of a running back. Uh, does, does a lot does a lot of great things. Uh, he's a combination back, power and speed. Uh, really dangerous when he when he gets in the open field. Uh, matter of fact, he took he took the first play 70, uh, you know, and during the scrimmage. So he's he's a he's a big time threat. Uh, Fleeks on the outside, vertical threat, uh, big target, a lot of room for error for the quarterback. Uh, but he he's a he's another guy that can that can kill you from anywhere on the field. And he high points the ball very well. And we've got a great picture of him there on timesrecordnews.com of him high pointing the ball in that scrimmage. And uh, he, he's up high in the air and getting it. And, and that's what he does. He uses that size to his advantage. And I'm going to be really interested though to see how much and how often we are going to see uh, uh, Morgan on fleeks. I think that's a great matchup tonight. And speaking of that defense, um, Ryder starting all seniors tonight. A lot of guys returning, but a lot of new guys. I know you've talked with both coaches this week. Um, I've got talked to Bindle a couple of minutes. He's excited about this defense this year. I think the defense, and, and, and truthfully, since Rob Dillard took over as defensive coordinator at Ryder, I think it has really rebranded the Ryder name. And I think they are more of a defensive threat. And I can think you can even say that during the last years whenever Jacob Rodriguez was leading the offense. That defense really stepped up. And it was absolutely the identity of the team last year. The reason that they were in a game with Argyle and, you know, 7 nothing there in the playoffs against what was the number one team in the state at the time. And so I think that defense coming back, you got some really big guys guys in there, Ryan Jones, Ben Carr, both of them leading tacklers who can do something. Of course, we mentioned Morgan on the outside. Defensive line, I think, is where we're going to see something interesting. How do you make up the Luke Gams? Luke Gams is the big name missing off that defense. 
But Jalen Gibbs is going to be moving around a lot. Yeah. And seeing where he is lined up, I think every every time before the snap is going to be an interesting look. Because I think they're a 4-2-5 base, but we're going to see some 3 3 five out of the Raiders tonight. Yeah, on the defensive side for Old High, D. Kelly is the Coyotes' top returning tackler. And see that Jacoby Clay has started every game for Old High linebacker since he was a freshman. The Coyotes' defense was strong last year during the playoffs. Coach, what will they have to do tonight to contain Ryder? Man, just get after the get after the quarterback. Uh, I think that's the big key. Uh, even during the scrimmage, uh, I know Gravit, he he likes to, to, to blitz out of that out of that eye front. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be the key is just getting to that quarterback and consistent pressure all night. I think there's a question and there's people that oppose this to me with Coach Freeman and and the fact that he hey he's actually the athletic director of WFISD right now. He's wearing two hats. He's trying to be the head football coach and the athletic director. How does he do that? Well, I'm gonna tell you, Byron Gravit over there who has head coaching experience is an invaluable person for Grant Freeman and his coaching staff right now. See, both teams are on the field. We're lining up for the anthem. Um, talk, looking at both these teams, I know one is 4A, one is 5A. Huge expectations for both of these teams in the final year. Uh, real quickly, if we can, give me kind of a rundown on what you're going to see in the districts for both teams and maybe in the region. Old High playing to get to the state semifinal last year. Can we do it again? Yeah, I, I think they, they've got the talent. I think some things have got to gel. Um, you know, it, it depends, I think, somewhat on the quarterback play, but it often does. And I think that's the question all, both of these teams have. They have some questions about quarterback play. How far can they get with the guys that are there with them right now? Got a learning curve a little bit, breaking in some new starters who have not played. Again, Joe Castle's played varsity ball, but this is a different varsity ball. And, and, and again, Gravit has played varsity ball, but he's playing in a quarterback position. So I think there's a learning curve here early on. But once you get the district, I think both of them are district title contenders. Old High will dig, you you know, have to you know work with the cater a little bit, and, and 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 you know that was a great game, great two games they played last year. And Ryder, that district's so wide open. You know, it could be them Cooper or Wiley. I think it's a three-horse race there, and, and but Ryder's right there in the mix. Okay, sir, we're getting close to kickoff time. We will pause for just a minute. The Ryder Orchestra with the national anthem. We have a flyover coming soon, so. So the stadium's filling up. It's a great atmosphere. We are moments away from kickoff, but we'll pause for the national anthem. All right, we're back. We're just waiting for the National Amps about to start. The Ryder Orchestra is on the field, ready to go. Teams are lined up, and we are actually, in a little pause, we are waiting for the flyover. We have the 80th training or 80th flying training wing at Shepherd Air Force Base. It's a flyover tonight for this final game between Wider, Ryder and Old High. Pilots of this are Lieutenant Colonel Eric Johnston, Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Schuerman, Lieutenant Colonel James Killian, Major Max Gasser, First Lieutenant Caroline Gagnon, and then finally Major Blake Nelson or Blake Nixon. And if the name sounds familiar to people out there, he's an 03 graduate of Holiday and an 07 graduate of the Air Force Academy. And I think he played baseball out there. I've heard he played baseball, uh, and, and you know, reports for me. Uh, Zach Duncan is telling me that the kid could could throw it. Zach Zach Duncan said uh, one of the first features he ever wrote and when he was freelancing for the Times Record News was on Blake Nixon. So a uh, little bit of full circle for him there. We got crowd filling up. Old High is about full. Riders almost filled. I think they're going to open up the grass tonight. So yeah. 14,500 tickets sold for this final game and the final year of this rivalry. I think, like I said, Ryder has won the last nine. Um, the last Old High win was 2015. 15. No, no. 2014, sorry. 2015 was probably the greatest game in the history of this rivalry. Ended on a last-second field goal by Brock Dowling 
Um, and, and we graded it as, uh, you know, a few years ago we did a, a, the TRN. We celebrated the 50-year anniversary of Memorial Stadiums with the 50 most memorable games ever played here. And that one made the top 10. And it was, that was my, uh, that was my second Ryder Old High game to cover. And man, what a game. I mean, so good. And it was such a bad snap. And I remember Willie Phillips was the holder and he barely got that thing up, laces out in time for Dowling to send it through the uprights. So we're getting quiet now and things are about to start. So we're going to turn down again. We're going to get to the anthem, enjoy and hear the flyover and uh, we'll get this game started here. We're about nine and a half minutes from kickoff. Thank you. Please remain standing as we honor our country and our flag with the presentation of colors by the Ryder JROTC being led onto the field by 2nd Lieutenant Color Guard Commander Gregory L. Estrada. Orchestra traveled to New York City and made their Carnegie Hall debut to a sold out audience. They were the only group, high school group, selected to perform in the International Viennese Master Series at Carnegie Hall. Tonight, under the direction of Lloyd Suter, the Ryder Varsity Orchestra will perform our national anthem.
right. And we are back. Great national anthem by the Ryder Orchestra. Flyover at Memorial Stadium. 14,500 tickets sold for this final matchup between Wichita Falls High School and Ryder, the 62nd time at Memorial Stadium in Joe Golding Field. Moments away from kickoff. Captains for both teams lining up for Old High. It's Kyler Boone, Keandre Fleeks, Ivory Kelly, Dean Kelly, Jacoby Clay. For Ryder, Ben Carr, Norman Medita, Tyrone Morgan, Jalen Gibbs, and Kate Johnson. And guys, I can tell you, I've, I've been, so I know I'm at Ryder during the day, it's been exciting all week, and uh, I'm excited for this thing to start. Been, it seemed like the long. Usually, it's, 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 it's been a long week. Than what it usually is. Well, what what is it? Thing. What is it like for the whole mum? His mum day. What is that like? You know, you, you think some kids wouldn't buy in, but every kid at that school, Ryder, like old high, but the halls are crowded. Nobody's talking at lunch. Nobody's talking, and you would think that you know some maybe would buy in. Everybody buys in, and it's yeah. it's, it's a cool. Old, kind of old school tradition um, that maybe you hope makes it somewhere to one of the new schools. Um, but very cool, um, quiet all day long. <laughs> yeah, and then can Coach Bell says the same thing, like Berkeley breakfast, those kind of traditions. What, what was that, what was being part of that like at Old High? I mean, just, you know, having, having older siblings uh, attend Ojai and, you know, the Berkeley breakfast, the, the hamburger fees, the spaghetti dinners. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just a lot of, a lot of tradition. Uh, so I, I was just, I was just loved being a part of it. Uh, I always look forward to being a part of it. Uh, but like I said, it is, when it comes to tradition, you know, it doesn't get any better than, than Old High and, and, and Ryder. And, and both of you grew up in this city too. And so I guess the other question is, is uh, vandalism? Vandalism? Anybody? Either of you know, like dead coyotes on, on your docket here, Holly? Or no, so we, we had a good time. <laughs> like I, said, I, was, I was a soccer guy, so we always had a good time. But, but I grew up going to Old High games and Ryder games. I remember watching Coach here play, watching Greg Henderson play, the, the, Dietrich Cage. All it was great teams. Just a football guy. Loved coming to the stadium. Um, went to a lot of Hershey games too. I mean, we were talking about the uh, the other day when uh, Hershey picked up the fumble and ran it back against Old High. So I've been here for a lot of awesome games and just love, love the town, love the city, love the schools. Yeah, you mentioned you mentioned that Hershey. That's that's one of the most memorable moments I think in Hershey history. That recovered fumble to beat Old High there in the late nineties. I, I have so many Hershey people, you know, bring that up. And let's let's talk real quick. We're a kickoff here. The uh, the Hershey Huskies last night, which Coach Bell, offensive coordinator of them Huskies, uh, did pick up a win, 34 nothing against Clint. Went all the way to Andrews, Texas. Let me tell you, my rival growing up in Big Spring, Texas, main rival is Andrews. And which, Coach, I didn't know we had. I had something in common with your mama. She grew up in Big Spring, Texas. Big like Spring, me. Texas. Yes, <laughs> yeah, got yes, to sir. learn that, man. I enjoyed talking to your mother early, earlier this month, uh, reminiscing a little bit. But hey, let's 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 get the reminiscing out of the way. It's about time to kick off. Old High getting the ball first. And Kenji Johnson setting up to kick it deep for right. Looks like Ian Beasley, Eric Powell. Braylon Kinsey back. Trying to find a number on that one to receive. Four moments away from kickoff. Coach, or Mr. Hall, you said uh, Ian Beasley, one of the fastest players in town. So we'll see who gets the ball here. But there's three guys in the back for Old High. They have a chance to take it all the way if they get it. Beasley ran the fastest 100 meters last year of anybody in the city, so uh, obviously he's got the track speed to go. For the final time, ball's in the air. We're taking about 20, Jordan Mitchell. He's going to the left. Lowered his shoulder as he's trying to get going and then did get a little bit of the Ryder guy, but he went down. Ryder's got to be careful. There's a lot of emotions in that game. 
And I think very easily there, number 41 kind of slides into the tackle, Hunter Talley. Got to watch that, particularly as a sophomore, <laughs> getting in that moment. Because uh, Coach, real quick, you've played in this game. What's first play, you get the ball first quarterback. What are we thinking right now? What are our nerves like just in this first, first snap? Man, we just we just want to get positive yards. We, we want to go forward, uh, not backwards. Uh, so, yeah, that's the main thing is just picking up positive yards on the first play. It's like Ian Beasley in the backfield with Gravit. And off the Beasley up the middle. Picks up about three. And we're off and running. Just yeah, like Zig coach, right off the bat. Positive yards. Easy play, easy handoff. Again, you're dealing with the quarterback making his first varsity start position. And so yeah, keep it simple early on. I wouldn't be surprised at the first pass here too is for more of a right at the line of scrimmage, kind of a quick one. DeAndre fleeks down low here. Powell now in the backfield. Grab a check in his line. Kelly in motion. And off the pal up the middle. Couple yards. First big third down in the game. Are you get moving from misdirection there, coach. Or? Yeah, yeah, just just a little a little uh, counter off the off the jet sweep. Uh, good job by Powell sticking his foot and getting vertical. Third and five. Old High's first drive of the game. There's still people coming into this game, so it's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, and it will be until, I mean, usually there is until the second quarter. Uh, ball starter on Old Heights going to back him up. He third and ten. Little jitters there. I'd say it's early. I think we we'll talked about first quarter. Can you get in the groove? It's the difficult part about this being the first game of the season is, I mean, this is, I mean, your, your dress rehearsals, your your scrimmages, and nothing can compare, prepare you for this kind of crowd. Nothing can prepare you for this. You're not going to see this again. This is state rest championship of crowd. Yes, yes, it is. Grab again, play call again. Stay in the four wide, which they've gone four Got wide. Justin every Judy with Keandre Fleeks down here on the near side. Judy in motion. Fleeks turns, catches it. Picks up about four. No lie, we'll have fourth down. Quick tackle there by Ben Carr. Jumped on me. He saw where the ball was going, reacted to it. Wrapped up, good tackle, no no, uh, no yak, no yards after the catch, and it's going to be a punt for Old High to start. Is it, is it deflating, Coach, whenever you have a that, that three and out to start a game? Yeah, especially the first drive. I mean, that, that, that first three and out is, is tough uh, on an offense. Do y'all script? Do you script your I, I do, yeah. I do, yeah. yes, yes, sir. I it's script, I script about 12. High snap, and punter gets hit after getting away, and there is a flag. Raylan Kinsey with the punt right to midfield, but there is a flag. May extend this old high drive. And, yeah, it, it is because they're, they're pointing forward. First down, old high, they're back on the field. We go back to the emotions of this game. The, and, and you get too hyped up, you're wanting to make a play, you're wanting to do something more than just the ordinary. And Raylan Kinsey did a great job of getting that punt off. A high snap, um, got the punt off, got hit. and He's, he's just a sophomore, and, and uh, Coach, uh, Coach Freeman heaped some big praise on him. In fact, he compared him to who I consider one of the better Coyote linebackers recently, Ryan Murdoch, compared them to him very favorably to Ryan Murdoch. Uh, and, and Murdoch was a tackling machine for three years for the Coyotes. Four receivers for Old High. First pass, and you can see it. They did kind of go towards the line of scrimmage, trying to set up the screen to the outside, and uh, the, the drop. I mean, I, I thought the ball was on point. Yeah, yeah. just a, just a, just an RPO right there off the inside inside zone. Uh, just just dropped it. Yeah, incomplete to Jackson Mitchell. Their second down and ten. Old High still four receivers. We're probably going to see that a lot tonight, and they have these receivers can go. So, your second down, Powell in the backfield. Draw. 
pressure right off the bat. Great stiff arm by Powell initially to, to, to break off the other one, but the, the help came in a hurry. Number 14, uh, was that Isaiah Watson in there cleaning that up off the backside? Yeah, I think uh, Donnell got in there, and then I think it was Jalen Gibbs with the final yeah. tackle there. Third and long, about third and 17 here. Oh, hi, another big third down early in this game. Those uh, those Ryder jerseys are killing me. Are. I mean, and these are the good jerseys. But those gold numbers, man. It is tough up here. This is a tough situation for OC to be in. Third and long. Not many plays drawn up for this one. Right. right. Keandre Fleeks down here by himself. Yeah. Screen. Red by Ryder. Tackled by number four. Ben Carr. Ben Carr, I mean, and he's had both third down stops uh, so far. He had the third down stop before they got the new the series of drives, and he, that time he reads the screen and just attacks it. And that's the way you got to do with the screen. you got to attack it. Get downhill when you see it coming. Don't let the blockers get set up. Looks like Braylon Kinsey back on the punt for Old High. We have fourth and 21 from the 15. Tyrone Morgan back to receive for Ryder. Good snap this time. Kinsey with a punch straight up in the air. It's going to bounce about the 25, go backwards. Ohio down it at the 20. And you can, you can usually tell when it's kicked like that, when it's coming down, it's going backwards. It's, it's not going to go the way that, that, that the punting team wants it to. And so, I hate the big, you know, so Ryder with the first mistake, kind of giving them new life. Old High unable to take advantage of it. And now here comes Ryder's offense. Coach, you, you're in this kind of field position, getting the ball. And it's almost like a quick, quick exchange here with the field position. What's your first call? <clears throat> Me, I'm going to take a shot. I'm going to go to yeah. the end zone. It's, it's, it's a sudden change. Uh, you know, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take a shot. Yeah. Joe Castle's leading the Ryder offense at quarterback, sophomore, Kenji Johnson in the backfield. Hand off to Johnson. Tries to get away from one tackle, tackled by two or three Coyotes, still moving. Wow. <laughs> over there. Good job tackling by the Coyotes, only a three yard gain. Hey, for Johnson, he better be hard to tackle tonight. He's wearing deer and water on the back of his shirt. And if you haven't read, heard the story, like the, the Ryder players are re wearing the nameplate of some of the greatest players in the history uh, of the program. Deer and water on the top of the TRN's top 25 list of all-time Ryder athletes. Ray Johnson down low, Drew Haston up top. First carry for Morgan. He makes a cut. Almost gets a first down. I think we're going to run out of first down inside the 10-yard line. You saw him coming out of the slot, getting the jet sweep there, and that's what they want to do. An athlete like that, you find ways to get the ball in his hand. Absolutely. First down rider on the nine. Castle's hand off to Johnson. Three straight running plays by the Raiders down to the two-yard line. I love the patience on that play. How big is patience for a running back? Man, uh, they, they, those guys have to wait on those on those blocks. You know, they have to wait on those guards and those tackles to pull around. So, yes, that was a, a, a great job. Hunter Talley in the backfield as well with Johnson. Another handoff to Johnson. He stopped. Right at the two. I don't know if that was a read or not, but if it was, Castle should have pulled that one. That was six if it was. Now, it may not have been a read for say, but Third and goal here from the two. Ryder with all with four straight running plays to start their offensive possession. Ryder has, has an, an offensive lineman that had to come out of the game because his helmet came off during that play. So you had a, I think it was the center. Castle's coming out. Jalen Gibbs in for the Raiders. Castle's back in, okay. Yeah, get, just come over, get the play, yeah, back and forth. But you see uh, Gibbs coming in. Obviously, you're going to a bigger package, which he, he's he's listed as a starter. It's their tight end, a sniffer back. I'm not going to see if surprise the Ryder takes a timeout here. Yeah. Play clock was getting low. Timeout, Ryder, 555 left to go in your first quarter. We are live from a sold-out Memorial Stadium. Again, still people in the parking lot coming in. 14,500 tickets sold. Uh, and I'm going to say say this: there was a lot of debate about you know what old high sell out their side because their side did it sold out slower than the other. Some controversy about you know if some of them knew what side they were supposed to buy their tickets, but that is a sea of red. 
over there on the other side. That's a lot of black and red is what I see. Maybe some of that black maybe is Ryder, but I'm thinking that's a lot of Kyo fans over here. And this Ryder side, which we're on with the press box and looking down, it is full, and you can start seeing, the, I call it the grassy gnome. Maybe that's, that's not PC, but <laughs> it's filling up over there too. <laughs> Big third down for Ryder on the six. Kenzie Johnson in the backfield. Jalen Gibbs in the game. Kenzie Johnson gets up the middle and he gets in. For six, Ryder touchdown. Kenzie Johnson from seven yards out. And, I mean, really a patient drive by Ryder. Just kind of stuck with it. They didn't try to put it on the arm of their sophomore quarterback. They said, hey, we've got experience on the old line. We've got backs that we trust in. Let's go about it that way. And, I, and I'm very interested that they put Kenji Johnson. I'm going to call him the little train. Bud Deerenwater's nickname was the big train. Kenji's like 5'5", five five, so he's a little train. <laughs> yeah, Ryder's trying to impose their will early. Get that run game. Johnson with the kick. Flag on the play. I don't know if we were offside or had a false start. Saw movement on both. We'll see what we got here. Beautiful night here at Memorial Stadium. I don't think you could ask for a, a better night for this game. The, so the, the flag's on Old High. Kenji Johnson, you know, who just ran in touchdown, he's also the team's kicker. Which, he's a good soccer player. Yes, sir. But uh, uh, as you as you know, right here sitting mm -hmm. next to me, that's me and the soccer coach. But uh, he wanted them to decline the penalty. He's out there waving his arms. Yeah. Decline it, decline it. Let me kick it. Let me kick it. That's <laughs> what you expect from a soccer player. As Castles, just, Castle, who just ran over the, the referee? Oh, it's Drew Haston out there. So ball on the two. Looks like Ryder's going to go for two here early in the game. Johnson in the backfield. And, and still and stuck with the run game, inside run game. And going to be stuffed short. But you're seeing a commitment early on here from Ryder. Even, even with the short field, it's a commitment to the inside run game to start off. And you got to wonder maybe what they're setting But up. you got to look at it too. Old High, given you're def defensively playing with the short field coach, they did a real good job there holding their own inside the 20 on the yeah, first drive. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. They, they, they forced you. I mean, you had to make some plays on third down. Yeah. I mean, that, that's what, uh, I mean, that's all you can ask for of your defense when you put it up against your backs against the wall. Make right. them Make them do something on third down, but yeah, didn't uh, didn't see the ball in the air, did we? I think that was all runs. Yes, sir, it was. So 5:32 left to go in the first quarter. It's Ryder six, Michelle Falls high zero. Kenzie Johnson the kickoff for the Raiders. Beasley Powell and Mitchell back for old high. Yeah, the dot race. I wasn't looking. Usually I like to watch the dot race and do some play-by-play uh, -play of it, but, you know, Chad snuck it in there early tonight. Uh, wasn't expecting the dot race here in the, in the first quarter. And which you're going to hear him throughout the night. And uh, Chad, uh, Chad Johnson, he's the unofficial fourth man uh, of this broadcast. And, you know, you might hear him say something silly like there's some cheese on the broccoli <laughs> or some mustard on the lettuce. And uh, you might hear me I javiically. I think we may have everything here tonight, fellas. we got a drone on the field. Yeah. we got a flyover. Fair catch there by number 17. And you got to wonder what the referees will do because referees are actually ordered to stop play whenever there is a drone over the stadium. And so right now it looks like they're going to let it go. But I think a referee, I've seen it last year that uh, you can, uh, they, they stopped it until that drone vacated. First down, Old High. Second drive of the night starting on their 25. Andre Fleeks will be here at the bottom already. One catch for him for about five yards, but he is that big target the Gravit's looking for. They can make something happen here. He 
Ian Beasley in motion. Back to Powell. Makes one miss, gets up, tripped up, right across the line of scrimmage for a gain of one. Carson Ayers with a tackle. Ayers is being tasked with replacing Luke Gams. And he did last year, too, when Gams was hurt. And so, I mean, it's not, this is something he's used to. But but that is is his assignment. That's, that's I mean, I don't think anybody's carrying a bigger load on their shoulders on that defense than having to replace Luke Gams and what he's done, of course, you know, right now at ACU. Beasley and Powell in the backfield. Beasley in motion. Back to Powell. Stopped the line of scrimmage again. Third and long. Little little extra on the play here. We'll see, but we got a maybe on Ryder. Yeah, coming up and talking to Jalen Gibbs right away. And if this is a person, you got to remember, you get two of those, right? Two unsportsman likes. And so he, he that. And that's why they noted it's his first one. If he gets a second one, he will be out of this game. Second big penalty for Ryder. Yeah, both both the Bulldogs first down so far coming on Ryder penalties. Yet to see anything, you know, down the field. We, we, I mean, the longest pass, we threw about a four-yard pass on right, right. third down. Do you think it's about time to attack down field, Coach? I mean, yeah, just, you know, take a shot so those guys will at least know that you'll, you know, take a shot and go over their head. And you got a 6'2", 6'3", guy out here on the outside, bottom of the screen. Delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty. Okay, we're going to back over that five, five yards delay of game. No, I'm excited to see, really, with, with Fleeks, you know, getting to watch him some last year in the playoff run. Ohio's got some guys that can get to the end zone if they get it in their hands. I'm going to say, I haven't seen this before at this game. I've seen the grass get opened on this side of the stadium. Now both sides of the stadium, they have opened the grass for extra seating. Grab it on the move. Oh. Trying to find number 20, Jordan Mitchell, broken up. Yeah, good. Jacob Cahill jumped in front of that one, nearly had a pick. Second and 15 for Old High. Oh, there's, like I said, we're four minutes up in the first quarter. There's still people driving in, walking in, trying to find parking spots. <laughs> and, and I'm going to tell you, it's, it's hard to leave. If you want to leave this game early, good luck getting your car out of here. Ryan Jones. No, 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 number 10. And Andre John Donnell. Dre Donnell, another one of the Archer City transfers here from, from Old High. And and just be honest here, he's one that, that wasn't completely sure that he could it translate for him from the 2A to the 5A ball. And Coach Bendel has raved about this kid's quickness coming off the edge. Big third, right third down long, four receivers for Old High. Gravit scrambling out of the pocket, looking down the field, looking for fleeks. And intercepted by Tyrone Morgan right across the 50. A little extra here. It's going to be Ryder Ball. Pressure. 47. Pressure. We were just talking about Drayton now and how, how Bindle was talking about how quick he is, and he showed it again. And it's a nice move, too. Set the guy up on the outside and swam underneath. Flushed out the quarterback. He throws it under pressure as Jalen Gibbs is coming from the other side. And, yeah, there it was. Tyrone Morgan covering Keo Fleeks. That matchup we talked about pre-game, and Morgan's the one who jumps it. Morgan, five interceptions last year. First one this season tonight. Three receivers to the top for Ryder. Johnson in the backfield with Castles. Ryder all running play so far. We'll see what this drive holds right across the 50. I'm saying that's a passing formation to me. Big catch there. Yeah, down the seam, trying, yeah, trying to find a number on, on who it was. It's hard for us to see from up here. But down the seam, great read. I mean, there's a quick read by Cap. By I think Cap. number seven, Cam Self, there with the catch, if I can read it right. Did that look like a pre-snap read to you, Coach? Like he saw something in formation? Oh, yeah, it just looked like he was uh, reading the safety. Uh, the safety had two verticals pushing at him, and, uh, you know, he went to the, the, the one on the seam, wide open. 
I'm gonna, we got a former quarterback up here. Got a penalty here. Muslim man downfield is going to bring it all the way back. So, really, I mean, guys in the booth, penalties early in this first in this first quarter. You get that a lot in the first games. Coach Bell tell you last night. I know the Huskies had their fair share of penalties last night too. But that, how, how does an offensive lineman? That ball was out of there within a couple of seconds, and you had an offensive lineman and an eligible man downfield. <laughs> That's a. Uh, there's some, probably some confusion maybe on the play call. Well, yeah, those, those RPOs are, are kind of, you know, changing the game as far as linemen downfield. Uh, you know, you want to teach those guys to kind of stay at the line of scrimmage. Two receivers up top. Johnson in the backfield. He'll get on the swing pass here in the flat. Breaks through a couple tackles, but Old High is going to number look like number seven here for Old High. Jordan Valera with the tackle. Ryder is going to lose yards and be second and 14. Yeah, how about Kenji Johnson? Uh, does that, I mean, he, he's, he's I mean, how, how tall is Kenji Johnson? He had a little bit of a growth spurt, I heard, but I mean, I think he's about 5'7", about 5'8", five, five, but I mean, you look at him this summer, he's had a great summer just in the weight room, and all, like I said, he, he plays soccer for us as well, played a little basketball, just, just an a- athlete, but it's fun to see those guys when I don't see him for a few months, but he, you can tell he's been in the weight room, so. He's a thick kid, that's for sure. You know, it's compact. You, know, you love those running right. backs, short, <laughs> compact running backs. Ball back to jump. Elijah Jackson. Yeah, and, and that's Elijah Jackson. And there's the third of the Archer City transfers here for Ryder. I joked with Coach Wendell that he really hit that transfer portal hard. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> all kidding aside, they, uh, the, the, all three of those guys, Castles, uh, uh, Elijah Jackson, and Andre Donnell, you're seeing their imprints, their fingerprints on this game right away. And, and Jackson kind of gives them that third back a little bit bigger of a back. And, and, and Ryder was missing that. Yeah, yeah big they, third down here for the Red. Raiders. Kyle said a good job holding them inside the 20 here on that first drive. Let's see if they can get a stop here and get the ball back. Castles in the backfield. Tally back there as well. Two receivers down low for Ryder. We're going to go timeout. timeout Raider, their second one of the quarter. But again, like I said, Coach, I was telling you, Ojai played well inside the 20. If they can get a stop here, get the ball back. Keep doing all right. Yes, sir. Real quick, let me pull up some, some scoring updates from around the area as uh, because we're always keeping track. Of course, the Huskies, Hershey, go out to, to Andrews, Texas, and, and beat Clint 34 to nothing. Uh, I was there last night covering Knox City and Westbrook. Knox City knocks off the number one team in the state in, in, in Class A Division One, Westbrook. Two-time defending camp, uh, 34-24. Let me scroll down a little. Nocona also played last night. They beat Era. 42 to 22. Benjamin up big trying to defend their state title in six man. They're up 67 27 over Follette. Crow is getting a nice six man win over Strawn 46 to 20 right now. Only in Alvord. They are tied at six after one quarter. Winthorpe's up 15 nothing on Henrietta early. Guys, I'm going to say it again. This crowd is phenomenal. It's still, there's still cars moving in the parking lot. We got Old High's now filled up this side of the grass. Riders on this one. This is, it's a great atmosphere for all these kids. There's a lot there. of parking tickets out there. Yeah. You could you could hand out too. If you really <laughs> want to be that guy right now, right. you know, don't be that guy. <laughs> Snap back to Castles. And Jackson there. He's going to be close. We'll see what the spot is. Jackson thinks he has it. I like the difference you can see, and he does have the first down, but you can see the difference in all three running backs. You know, you saw the speed with Morgan coming around the edge. Jackson's more definitive. Five receivers for Ryder. We're going to go quick here. Castles drops, throws out here to Tyron Morgan. Slips through a couple couple tackles. Still moving. Kyle will finally bring him down, but enough of the first down. Ojai had a chance to get him right there at the line of scrimmage. Just gets away and picks up enough of the first down. And that's the shifty guy, right? I mean, that's the shifty guy in this three-headed running back, also slot receiver that, that, the, that the Raiders have profiled so far. Cohen Maroney in his game for Ryder in motion. And, 
and that's going to be the first uh, completion, I, I guess, downfield technically for Castle since the one earlier was 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 wiped out. But yeah, uh, who was that? 41, 41 Hunter Tally. I'm going to say another soccer kid with Ryder, but he's a good football first guy. No good, good at the Tally family, a good one in our our soccer team. But Hunter, just a sophomore. Yeah, getting the start at tight end, or we call it the sniffer back, if you will. Maroney in motion. Castles broke. Big catch there by number 13, Gray Johnson. Good defending there as well. Just great catch down to the 10-yard line. Dangerous throw. That was a laser. <laughs> yeah. A laser. Jordan Lair with the tackle. Ryder going quick again. Back to Johnson. Oh, man. Gets through a couple tackles and into the end zone. Kimby Johnson, second touchdown of the night. It's almost casual, right? Like, it almost looks like he's just out for a little jog. Just kind of casually jumping out there. Yeah, just setting those, setting those blocks up. Yeah. Setting those blocks up and letting those lines get out in front of him. And then that's the, and again, that's that's really kind of what I'm seeing where he fits. Because, you know, Jackson was more downhill. I mean, he's trying to hit that hole hard. Whereas, you know, Kenji, yeah, again, probably doesn't have that luxury. He's not going to run through as many tackles. He's been hard to tackle, let's say that. Yeah. But setting those blocks up is the best way for him to go. Second touchdown tonight for Johnson. 11 yards there. He'll set up for the PAT. All his down kick is up. It is good. With eight seconds left to go in your first quarter, it is Ryder 13, Old High Zero. Kenji Johnson, I'm loving it, man. I'm the little train. He, he, whether he likes it or not, he is the little train right now. You can't put deer and water in the back of your jersey and not expect it. I know we've only passed a couple times, but I think Castles has looked composed out there for, for a sophomore. I know I know both quarterbacks are new, but real composure there on that drive. I mean, there's something to be said for coaches' kids, right? I mean, coaches' kids are going to – you're around the game all the time. I mean, that's one of the, the benefits, I think, of, of being one. I mean, you, I, this isn't the first time he's been on the field. For, yeah. I mean, and yeah, he didn't play, but he's been on the field. He knows what this atmosphere and is. Both, like I said, both quarterbacks, older yeah. brothers, dads have been coaching at each school. So, did you? I mean, it, it, you kind of knew what you were getting into when you're coming up too, because you're watching your brothers play in this game. Absolutely, yeah. This is a game that I've watched since the '90s. So, yeah, yeah <laughs> I was excited to to play in it. See the crowd like with the crowds like this. Absolutely. Yeah. One hundred percent. Both both sides. Both, both, both sides. Grass. Yeah. Okay. Grass. Yeah. It's just it has it's been unfortunate. Now I mean it, it is what it is. I haven't seen the crowd like this since 2015. Uh, 2015, and then that was the last time we really thought the Coyotes would contend as well. But even the playoff game between the two did not sell out like this. Johnson, the kick. Mitchell Beasley and Powell back to receive Wichita Falls High. And a pooch kick here for Ryder at the third. Eagles back to number 17. Keaton Evans, his second fair catch of the night. And Old High will take over on their own 30. Coach, I know it's early in the game. This is a big drive for the Coyotes right here. Yeah, they, they, they need to get something going. Uh, you know, it, it, it could get out of hand if, if they don't. Got a little flag on the play. See if we get a few more yards for the Coyotes. But Ola has the weapons. Like I said, Pal, you talking to Freeman? It's something that's been a point of emphasis the last few years are the blindside blocks. And uh, yeah, you still you see it still. And of course, it's hard. I mean. In return game, I can't imagine being a special teams coordinator and you can't coach blindside blocks anymore. I mean, that's what you were out there looking for. Right. Or wedge busting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes, yeah. I right. mean, that's what you wanted. That was the fun part about being right. on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Old last starts at their own 16. Third drive of the game. Yeah, pal, that's pal again and pushing the pile there as he runs into it. And you see his compact power as well. And well, that was Powell. Wasn't Beasley. It? Beasley, Beasley on this okay. one, yeah. I think we have a fumble here on the play. It's going to be Ryder Ball. I didn't see it come out. May have come out late. 
Wow, came out in the scrum, and Ryder's going to have a short field for the second time in this game. Well, guys, I didn't see it get out. I thought, thought Beasley got down, but it may have come out. And Freeman's questioning it right now. And I think I get Freeman's argument here was, I mean, when, when was the play stopped? Right. I mean, because forward motion, it kind of stopped. Like progress has stopped. Yeah. And that's going to end your first quarter. Ryder 13, 0 by 0. Kind of a tough break there for Old High. Need, needing that drive to be big. Ryder gets another short field. We're going to need a defensive stop. Yeah. If you're the Coyotes. And, let me, uh, and it's still early. Some stats here. Old High ends that quarter negative three yards on offense. Ryder has 83 yards on offense. And again, they're working with the short field twice. About to be doing it for the second time here to start the second quarter. And like you say, this game, it, it could be snowballing in a hurry here. Seeing more conversation still out here. I guess the guy was the guy conversating is the guy here helping the referees. He's bringing them some water. Man, get them hot referees <laughs> hydrated. Listen, the sun's down, but it's still hot. Yeah. And that turf, like people, if you, if you don't realize it, turf just absorbs the heat. It's the last thing to kind of cool off out there. Ryder with the ball in the. Kyle's 19, Castles in the backfield, tosses out to Morgan. Big time tackle there by Old High. I think number 43, Gabe Mallory. I really thought that was there. Like at first, I mean, there was a lane there. I thought for him to go score. All right, just a, just a running back flare, getting the tackle out in front. <clears throat> Now you're talking about the weather. The things I remember more about Ryder Old High is, is always in November, Coach. Cold, <laughs> right, 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 yeah. 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 This is a little warm here. Right. I always like coming in my little jacket different. and enjoying the games. Yeah, nobody's wearing the Letterman jacket today. <laughs> nice. Big, big tackle there for Old High. Yeah, good stand by the off by the defensive line. Now something late, and the Ryder's going to get a 15-yard penalty. Big tackle for Old High, got him behind the line, so it's going to be, it'll be third down and long after the play. I think it's Morgan who came up upset about the Old High guy, first guy there kind of did grab the back of his helmet, but you got to understand, I mean, this is all in the motion of the game. You can't do these things right now. I think if you're going to tackle Morgan, you better make sure you got him too, from, from what I've <laughs> yeah, seen. He's so. a little slippery. <laughs> yeah. So penalty backs Ryder up to the 31 yard line. That's a loss of down situation too. So so third down, real long for Ryder. Should be about We're getting it set. Should be 21 look like. 22, yes sir. I think officials getting it organized down here. So old high looking the force, a long field goal, really even a punt. They can get a stop here. Castles drops back. Looks long. Has a man open. Ray Johnson with the catch. Touchdown rider. Coach, you see a throw like that. I mean, the arm, the arm talent is, is ridiculous. Uh, great route on the outside. Uh, backside, backside post. I mean, hitting the guy in stride like that where he's able to extend his arms smoothly and pull it in. Without breaking stride. Yes. Yeah, that's Junior Gray Johnson with the touchdown. Extra point. I think we got a new kicker. Yeah. I think Titus Blagg puts it through. Another soccer player. <laughs> <laughs> I expect the kickers to be soccer players at Ryder. 11 over 3 left to go in your second quarter. Ryder 20, old high zero. I think if you're old high coach, we got we got to get something going right oh, now. Oh yeah, this like, is this is this is the drive. I mean, big time drive. Big time drive. It's yeah. I mean, time's running out. You got to get something, some kind of life to your offense right now. And so, man, and what you've been doing, you've been trying to establish that run game between the tackles, and it's not happening right now. But it's also been hard to to drop back and pass. It has. It has. Uh, the, the big thing is just flipping, flipping field position. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's, another shot of the field. As much as anything, that would help right, right now make Ryder have a long field to have to mm -hmm. drive for a change. Johnson, the kickoff for the Raiders. Beasley Powell, Mitchell back, but Ryder's kicked off. This will be, what, the fourth time all, all pooch kick kicks to Keaton Evans over there on the side. We'll see what we do here. Returners for Old High about at the 15. Fair catch. Fair catch all by the Cody for Ricky. Ricky Paniagua. Paniagua. Thank you, Chad Johnson. <laughs> Beat me to it. <laughs> Paniagua. Yeah. Those, uh, I've, I've never caught one out there, but those pooch kick fair catches, those, the yellow nerves in you trying to catch that, I mean, just. Yeah, those, 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 are, those are tough. Those are yeah. tough. Four or five guys running at you. Yeah. And I know they, I know they can't hit you, but right. still, they're, I mean, they're going to get as close as they can. So, Ohio takes over on their own 30. First down. Fleek's top of the screen. He has one catch tonight for five yards. We'll see if we find him on this drive. Tyrone Morgan on him. Ball knocked up in the air, and it's going to be intercepted by Rock. Whoa, almost intercepted. Uh, I thought, yeah, I thought he had it and was going to score. <laughs> Jalen Gibbs, was. he thought he was going to the house. He thought he had a big boy TD. Look at this bat that thing down, aren't we? I mean, yeah, yeah just <laughs> knock it down. Second and ten for Old High. Four receivers. Jordan Mitchell down here, bottom of the screen. Rabbit rolls right, looking downfield. Big throw, big catch right there. Number five, Justin Judy. Kyle, first down. Nice throw. Best throw of the night by Crabbe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just getting him outside the pocket, uh, moving that outside backer, opening that window for the curl. Kyle's going quick, full wide. Quick throw wide out there to Fleeks. Incomplete pass. We'll go second and ten. Talk real quick about the, the, the guy who made the catch in the last one, Justin Judy. He's going to end up being their, their kicker as well. Been at City View the last couple of years as their kicker. Uh, transferred over to, to Old High, and, and it has. He's made his imprint. He's also under starting spot here as a receiver. You know something fun about him? What's that? Soccer kid. Soccer kid. <laughs> well, I <know> that. <laughs> Four wide for Old High. Powell around the right side. Going to pick up a few yards. Ooh, close. Very close. Out of bounds. Yeah. Be about third and six. Close on the late. Yeah. Did, Ryder's had a couple of those close calls. Did, do the emotions ever simmer in this game, Coach? I mean, I guess if it gets out of hand, it can, but. It, it, they they kind of come and go. I mean, they kind of yeah. come in spurts. <laughs> Four wide for Old High, Powell in the backfield again. Big third down, third seven for Old High. Grab it, drops, looks downfield. Rolls out to his right. No time to get it to Judy again. Defense there by number one, Ryan Jones. Fourth down for Old High. And I like Gravit breaking the pocket there, as it's, that was Elijah Jackson actually get, getting to him. But uh, breaking the pocket, getting outside. I mean, gave his guy a chance to make a catch. And, you know, it was a good defended play. I think that was uh, uh, Ryan Jones coming over. And uh, I know old high people, they wanted some pass interference on that play. But it was close. It's a 50-50 call, if you will. It's Braylon Kinsey with the punt. Good snap. Good punt to Morgan, fair catch. And he'll sit down with it on the 22. Yeah, that much better punt than the than the last time. <laughs> so he's got to feel a little bit better about it. And hey, he did at least fit field position. Did. Talk about that. Did. Uh, made Ryder work. You know, make him go the length of the field. And be the first time this this uh, this, this this I mean this game that Ryder would have. That. I like the rollouts of Rabbit. Kind of get, getting away, getting some more time and. 
Yeah, because the pocket's been collapsing on him so quickly, and, and you're seeing that. And, and it is. It's those uh, two Archer City kids on each side. Uh, you've got Elijah Jackson on one and Andre Don Donnell on the other playing a lot of these defensive end and rushing. Because they've moved, they've moved Jalen Gibbs to more of a linebacker role uh, through this year. He will rush the passer some, but... Four wide for Ryder. Hand off to Kenzie Johnson. Makes a couple cuts. Picks up about eight yards. The, the maturity, I, you know, Johnson, he, he carried the ball some last year. He was, he was the number three running back on the team. Uh, he didn't show this kind of, and I'm, I, I love a good patient running back. And he he, he just fits that so well. Right? He, looks, he looks good. He looks good. good. Just the guy, you know, a, you know, a patient running back you guys had last year. He's with USC right now, Mario <laughs> Peterson. Yeah. And it kind of, I'm not going to compare him because Mario's, you know, big, kind of big kid. Right, but right. but the, the running style, I think a little bit is just similar. Oh, yeah. Well, I hear Morgan, great tackle there. It's like by number six for old high, Carlos Moreno. Something extra must have been going on. I hear some boos from the old high side, and there's uh, some coaches pretty upset on the old high side, too. So they, they wanted something after this play. I didn't see what was going on. must have been something down the field. Big tackle there rings up third and five from the Ryder 27. Old high defense. Listen, if once you flip the field, you got to have the three and out. Timeout rider. Well, that was a big tackle there to set up that third down. And yeah, pass was kind of, but you got to make the play. And then the guy was in the right spot at the right time. It's like an ask for. I'm going to run down some more scores here real quick, guys. First, it's the first night of a uh, first Friday night of football season, right? I mean, I'm excited about what's going on in the entire area. You got a big one over in Iowa Park, Holiday in Iowa Park, the Battle of the Eagles, if you will, uh, uh, six nothing. Uh, Holiday up in the second quarter there. Uh, Winthorpe and Henrietta. It's now 15-7. Winthorpe over Henrietta. Vernon is up 21-6 over City View. 18 nothing. Archer City beating Quana at halftime. Uh, let me see if we find a couple more here before we get back to the action. Santo up on Electra, seven to nothing. And Jacksboro was down 26 to six in the first quarter. Now at halftime, and Jacksboro is up 34 to 26 on Breckenridge. They got a lot of firepower on their offense. Coach, real quick, where, where are the Huskies headed next week? No. Uh, uh, we go to Brock. Go to Brock. Just, just, just Brock. Just, just take on a tough Brock team. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> I think they're number one in huge, three. Huge game, and, and, and honestly, best football game I saw last year, Hershey Brock. So good week two. Three wide for Ryder down here at the bottom of the screen. Johnson in the back for another handoff to Johnson. He's going to push the pile. Picked up just enough for the first down. Had the pancake there in the backfield uh, for her rider. Uh, I'm going to try to say this name right. Cross. Olmstead. But Olmstead, maybe? I think it's Olmstead, yeah. Yeah, the center worked his guy all the way into the backfield and had him pancaked. Castle drops back. Quick pass. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, from quick to Cohen Maroney. Maroney may have been happy he didn't catch that one. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been because uh, that was uh, Ivory Kelly zeroing in right there, ready to take his head off. Second and 10 for Ryder on their own. It's like 34. Sticking with that trips down here to the, to the right side of the formation. Morgan in the backfield. Maroney in motion. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's a different running back. Oh, they brought Donnell in there to play running back. Dre Donnell getting some time of running back. And he, and he did that early on. He did it a little bit at Archer City. So Dre Donnell, as a freshman, actually played varsity football uh, at Booth. And, and played some running back for them. Five receivers for Ryder. Castles drops back. Oh, quick. Great, great blitz. Oh, Castles throws it. Incomplete pass. 
you got it across the line of scrimmage. Your, uh, your QB coach is going to be telling you in the film room, don't do that again, right? Yeah, yeah just, just eat it. Yeah, just eat it. Live to see another day. Absolutely. Yeah, but uh, great blitz. Who was it on the blitz? I, I missed it. Trying to catch the replay there, but he was he was through quick, and Castles really had no chance there from the start. Ryder first turn of that old high. Big hold here with eight minutes left to go in the second quarter. Going to have to get something going. Is, got, that, is that John says a Kenji back there to punt? Kenji back to punt. Fleeks back to return for Old High. Trying to find the other one. The good punt. Old High's going to let it bounce. Hits a rider player. Player at the 34. Ball hits a rider player. Up around the 35 yard line. Yeah, they, uh, they can't mark it back there, so it'll come back to where it originally hit the rider player. Yeah. So Olha will take over on the 35. Olha got a little stuff going last drive. Let's see if we can yeah, put something together here. You see the momentum creep in their favor. Coach talked about it. Flip the field. You, you do get the basically the three and out here. Get the punt back. You get some good fortune off the punt. Hitting the rider player, so you got pretty good field position as well. Powell, he's going to get through. That, that's the best hole that they've had in the middle of their, uh, in the middle of, uh, between the tackles tonight. Four yards. Picked up there, second down and six. As a play caller, Coach, how hard is it to stick to something whenever, you know, you see that you're kind of running to a brick wall over and over again? Jordan Mitchell down low, sorry. Jordan Mitchell down low, fleeks up top. Let him answer after this play. But, but, yeah, it's sticking to the running game. I mean, how tough is it? Because, I mean, if they haven't had a lot of success with it, you've seen them go right back to it. Yeah, I mean, you just you just have to trust your game plan, have to trust your preparation, your, your film study during the week, uh, and just stick to your game plan. Jacob Cahill with the tackle there on Powell. Third down and four for the Coyotes. Four receivers. So you have Mitchell in the backfield now for this play. And he's a... Yeah, he's a kid's gonna be a little big big part of this offense this year, playing some out wide receiver, but he's a good running back. Kravitz drops back, gets out again on the roll, looking down the field. Yeah, nothing there. Finally tucks it and run. Now nah, you're, you're kind of yeah, in the spot though. Down. We're going for it. it's a little tempting, right? Gets a few yards. Tackle there by Carson Ayers. You, you tempted? Would you? Would you? I, I, I'd probably I'd probably punt. I mean, you really hadn't, you really hadn't had much success uh, offensively, you know. So just try to yeah. play that field position game. It's I, I know a lot of the OCs who, who would. I, I know Coach Freeman the way he usually calls, which you know he's an offensive guy too. But he does t tend to punt in this situation. Like you say, field position games where Old High needs a stick right now. Good punt for Old High. It's going to take a bounce. Go out of bounds right at the 25. So 543 left to go. Ryder gets the ball back on their own 25. So again, keeping him in and backed up. Last possession started on the 22. This one's going to start on the 25. And uh, see if the, the old high defense can replicate what they did the last time out. Three receivers for Ryder. Old high showing a blitz. See if they come with it. I and mean, they've walked down two linebackers. One backs off. Johnson around the left side. Breaks a couple tackles. Knocked out of bounds. The 38, enough for the first down. What does Johnson have on the night? Do we have the... Yeah, the yeah, I get, I get that up. But you saw him kind of run. They went and ran away from the side of the blitz there. you feel like that was a check at the line, Coach? Uh, absolutely. I mean, you just kind of hold, get, get that center to hold the snap, see where the blitz is coming from, and then you get your call in. 
uh, Johnson tonight. He's got 56 yards just on eight attempts. So uh, average, it's a healthy average there. I think that's seven yards per average. If my times, my multiplication tables <laughs> do serve me right still. My wife will tell you, usually I mess that up. First down rider. Johnson again. Huge hole. Big hole up the middle. Picks up about nine. That shoestring tackle right there by Brandon. A little, a little more. We got a little more after. Got flags on the play. Another hurtful rider penalty. Yeah. I think, I think Ryder has more penalties tonight than Old High and having a hard time keeping our cool out there, Coach. Let me see if I can find the penalties. Because this will be, if it is on Ryder, this is going to be their their sixth one. And they'll be up to 60 yards in penalty yardage. Number 66, 50-yard penalty downtown. I, and I don't know. I didn't see what just happened. I don't know what was instigated, but you can't be the guy that's caught. And, then, <laughs> it's, and it's usually the second guy. Yeah, you know, it, that yes. gets caught. There, there's a lot of lot of lot of build up, you know, during the week right. during this game. Yeah, there's there's some animosity. I mean, you just happen to it, it. It is what it is. Let's let's call this game what it is. That's one thing I've loved about how these two coaches have approached this game. They don't they don't shy away from the rivalry aspect of the game. They don't play it down. It is absolutely right. It is not just another game. Trips down below second and 17. Back to Johnson. Kyler in the backfield. And they got to hold on to him. And they, they will. Big tackle for Old Eye in the backfield by a few of them. Looks like led by number 21, Braylon Kinsey. Old High's finding some momentum here on the defense, defensive end. Yeah, the, the, you feel it. I mean, the momentum has finally rolled over to that side. Of course, you got to maintain it here. You're going to have a third and 20. Get the stop. Get the ball back. You're going to have plenty of time to try to put some points on the board here before before halftime. And, and seven points, six points going into half could be huge for the Coyotes. Big third down. Last third and long was a rider touchdown. Let's see what the Eli defense can do here. Right at the four-minute mark. Castle's going to turn. It's not there. It's going to turn and throw it back. Kept up in the air. Johnson catches it. Swarm of old high guys. Get him again. Fourth down rider. Old high defense starting to play. Old high defense starting to play. Old high crowd is getting into this game. Well, they, are, they are fired up. They are fired up. That momentum, that defense is getting that momentum going. Two stops. You, you start seeing it. You start seeing it. Yeah, and they're going to use their first timeout. Good timeout here with 3:40 left here in the first half. And you kind of go back to it. Penalties with Ryder. Yeah. You, I mean, you get momentum and then it, it drives you back, and you got a fourth and but 20. And then 40 left to go in the second quarter. Penalties. Uh, you, you guys can tell me. You watch this game a long time. Uh, penalties. These kind of penalties. It just seem to always be a big part of this game. Yeah, like, like I said, the, the build-up during the week, is it, it's not necessarily what's happening on the field, but it's all the other extra antics during the week that kind of, you know, emotions kind of take over. Yeah. Guys, just let you know, coming into halftime, we're going we're gonna to turn down and uh, we're going to let the bands play, we'll let you listen to the bands, you know, that the, the big red band from Kyle Land and, and, of course, the Rider Riot, Riot Raider band and, and what they, they mean. Yeah. Uh, the traditions here, and that's a big part of it. You know, it's not just the football tradition that that's that's ending at these schools. It, it, it's all of them, and there's a proud tradition of bands. There's a proud traditions with all the different sports and activities. Kenzie Johnson on the punt, low snap. He'll pick it up, get a punt off. It's going to come out of bounds here, right about the 48. Old High, good field position with 3.33 left to work in this half. Now you're one big play away. One big play away from really just changing the temperature of this game. So 3.33 left here in the first half. Coach, you're, uh, you're, uh, Coach Bell, your brother played with Coach Bindle down here as a coyote. He did. He sure did. <laughs> what, what was Coach Bindle like as a player? Well, I, Coach Bindle, I mean, from what I remember, he's, he's older than I. Yeah. But, uh, he was he was high-intensity guy, high-motor guy, uh, really good defensive end. He had to ask. I was always curious about it. Three receivers up high, high for old high. Like the counter. Oh, Powell's going to get away. 
Nice little move there. We're going to have enough for a first down. Coyotes, biggest run of the night for Powell. It was, a, it was electric there. Yeah. yeah, listen to this crowd. Listen. I haven't heard a Coyote crowd sound like this in a long time. Let me tell you, man, why, why does this have to just be tonight, by the way? I really hope some Coyote fans. Y'all missed out on an incredible run last year, by the way, by these Coyotes. There weren't this many fans here whenever they were making that playoff run. Ball uh, start there. It's going to back him up five. 309 left. And then you hope that's not a penalty that derails everything. But it is. This is, and this, this isn't just about Ryder Old Dog. This is the last year of all three schools. And all three schools, all three of these football programs have been successful in the last three or four years. And they all got fun guys to watch, too. Yes. Any, anytime you're out here at the stadium, there's. It is worth the price of the ticket. <laughs> Out there to Kelly or Fleeks gets a couple yards back. Second down. I, I'm the reporter, all right. I, I'm the I'm the unbiased one, and I, I truly, yeah, I try to be that way. I support all three of these teams, I really do, and that's the way I feel about it. And and it drives me nuts to come to a Hershey game and not see enough people in the fan stands. It drives me nuts to come to an Old High game and not see enough people in the stands. Trips receiver down low here. Gravit rolls out looking. Nice catch there, but I think by Judy. Gravit pass complete to Justin Judy. Third and eight. Yeah, yeah big third down. Like Ohio's going to move kind of quick here. You're finally in four down territory, right? It's going to depend what happens here, but you're kind of there. Trips high, pal in the backfield. I really, I've liked Gravit on the move this quarter. Yeah, I right. think they've, they've done well with him on the move. Finding these receivers. Going to have timeout for, from the Coyotes. Minute 37 left to go in your second quarter. Big third down for the Coyotes. Freeman called that timeout. Freeman's not the play caller. But Freeman called that timeout, so clearly there was something he heard over the headset that made him there. There's a little bit of uncertainty here within the the, uh, the offense. Whenever you're in a situation, y'all do things a little bit different. Coach Johnson, he runs the defense. The offense is yours. I mean, are, are you the one calling the timeout in a spot like this? I mean, I'm just curious how you guys handle it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I have that, that freedom to call the timeouts. Uh, obviously, Johnson's word is, you know, he has he makes the executive <laughs> decision, so he can override my decision. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, tell me, so when I was watching it, I guess, earlier in high school, it was Greg Henderson, and we made that run in 2000. I think the crowd here for South Lake Carroll was incredible, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And absolutely. Yeah. When did you come? Give me, give me the rundown. I, I saw Henderson. I know I saw you, but I'm fuzzy on the years now, 20 years later. Okay, so uh, Greg Greg uh, was a quarterback in 2001. Uh, I was the next year. And then Greg's brother, Tommy, yes, was, was right after me, and Tommy had it for two or three years. And then Ben was right. <laughs> and then he was he was after Tommy, so a lot of yeah. a lot of good quarterbacks. Oh, I, I've been to some fun coyote games out here, but that, like I said, the South Lake Carroll one is one I remember. Crazy crowd out here. Back to Mitchell. That's Jordan Mitchell. We saw him in the backfield earlier at running back, and that's really the role he's played. But they want him on the field. You want your best 11 on the field. So putting him out of outside receivers the way they're getting there. Big first down for Old High there. Ball in the 26. Minute 29 left on the clock. Old High's driving, looking for a score for halftime. Three receivers high. Nice little throw and catch right there. That, that looked like a second read to me. Yeah, yeah, that, that's nice. Uh, those, those swings by those two guys to widen that, that backer to hit that curl. That was a good play. Old High going execution. Judy with a six-yard catch. Old High going fast here. Minute 10 left here in the half. Oh, there. That was, that's uh, maybe another penalty rider. What do we have here? He came through quick. I don't know if we saw movement or just got a little excited there. It's going to give Old High a first down. He's lucky it's just a five-yard penalty. 
and very easily to keep coming. To, to, to keep coming and, and still roll over the quarterback. And now he didn't hit him hard. I get that. But he's lucky it wasn't a 15-yarder on top of this five, which would have been half the distance from there, but still. First down old high from the 15. Two receivers each side. Powell in the backfield. Powell with the ball. Powell dropped for a six-yard loss. Big tackle there by number four, Ben Carr. Ben Carr's been everywhere tonight. He was, he's their leading tackler coming back this year. Well, it's him and Ryan Jones, and, uh, and you're seeing it, Ben Carr. I mean, it seems like every time they're getting a big stop, a third down or a tackle for loss, it's Ben Carr right there. Four receivers for Old High on the 20. And Gravix Gremlin tosses it out of bounds. He's outside the pocket. Did he get past the line of scrimmage? And they think they're saying yes. Flag, oh, flag, flag. Game. Oh, they're going to get him for the grounding. Okay, then that's what it is. Did not get the ball past the line of scrimmage. And uh, that's a tough man. Talk about loss of down. Now you're looking third and forever. I mean, and you got a quarterback trying to make the right play there, right? I mean, well, how do you coach up that guy in that moment? I mean, what do you what do you tell him, coach? I mean, like I said, just you get outside the pocket and you don't have anything, just live to see another day. Yeah. You know, just throw it away. Yeah. Go on to the next down. And he tried, just didn't get far enough. Probably waited a second too long, too. That was Dre Donnell again, though, in the pressure. We keep seeing Dre Donnell get around quickly into the back. Yeah. And not where you, you don't want to have to use your uh, timeout in that situation. But it's the right call as uh, I, ho I hope the scoreboard's okay. So if we pick up yards here, guys, it, I mean, like I said, Coach talking to you, if we pick up even like 8 to 10 yards here, are we going for, for field goal or are we trying to go for the end zone here, not before half? In, in this situation, uh, I just want to get points on get the board points. going into halftime. So, yeah, I'm going I'm to take the field goal and try to get three points. You, you got a kicker. You know, I can't, I can't see that. It doesn't look like there's much wind of anything out there, though, right now. And you got a kick. You have an experienced varsity kicker. He is, he's done well. He's been reliable at City View. City View, I, I, and in fact, I listed him as a, uh, a player to watch in my preseason uh, Red River team uh, as a kicker, as a special teams player. And I listed him as being a City View. And, and Coach Aldrich, you know, new head coach there at City View, he's Aldrich, calls me and he's like, Man, we're not making extra points. We're talking about my kicker, Judy's at Old High now. I'm like, what? Okay. You know, Freeman mentioned his name. I was like, maybe there's another Justin Judy in town or something. But sure enough, you, you got a guy. And he's like, no. I, I, he's like, he went over there for soccer. He's a great kid. He's a stud. So that's what Old High's inherited there coming from a kicking perspective. Kicking perspective. Flicks, top of your screen with Tyrone Morgan, Ryder secondary, hanging back around the 10. Trips receivers down low, pal in the backfield. Big third down here looking to get some yards. Maybe some points on the board. 25 seconds left. Rabbit moves, gonna look in the run. It looks for Fleeks down. Intercepted by Ryan Jones. Got a couple blockers. Gonna get it to release midfield. Finally shoved out of bounds by Powell. Ryder has the ball, eight seconds left on the old high 45. Big interception here by Ryan Jones. And you're in business. You're in business to try to put some more points on the board. You have one timeout. So that does mean you can try to hit something quick, get a little bit closer. I, I don't I don't I don't know what I mean what Kenji Jones' range might be. Any thoughts? 40 45, I think I mean okay. yeah. I don't know if we'd have like a David Pino, John Bailey situation out of here where they're kicking the 56 yarder or something, but. Pino, the names Pino and Bailey are on the back of a couple of these jerseys out here, too. I thought Gravit was going to run it there for a second. I mean, he had a little bit of space there to pick up some yards, but try, just trying to make something happen right now late in the half. And that's tough. I mean, and you probably wish he did run it. And 
because now you're putting Ryder in the situation with this interception. As you feel that, I mean, massive momentum swing. Ryder Gardner. Five seconds left from the uh, play block. Ryder's trying to, to figure call. some things out. You, you almost take the penalty. You got here. it off. Got it off. Ray Johnson open with two seconds left. Picks up 10 yards right there on the 32. Are we going to try to kick it? He's walking out there like he's going to. Now, you got the... We're going to try it. You got the luxury of a timeout. Of course, you only got two seconds. You got 51 yards here for Kenzie Johnson. Old Hyde's going to sit somebody back there to return this. Ten seconds left. Okay, we're going to call a timeout. Yeah. Take your time and get this set up. I'm going to be curious. Look like Ivory Kelly was the one who was going to go back and try to be the return guy if this was left short. Now, I haven't, I'm, I haven't seen Kenji attempt a long, longer field goal. I feel like all of his field goal attempts last year were within, within 30 yards or closer. Might have gone to 35 or so. I think he had a 30-yard extra point to uh, tie Decatur in that second right. game. That's yeah. right. Had to because, yeah, they got yeah. The, 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 the penalties. and That game was wild last year. Real quick here as we get before halftime. Again, we're going to bring you the bands at halftime. We're going to let them play, uh, let them have the moment. And uh, uh, I'm curious in some scores, so I'm going to look up some right now. Seymour and Anson tied 14-14 at the half. Graham's up on Bowie, 35-6. to six. That's also at halftime. Let's see. You know, I'm going I'm to make a go do uh, it. Just an observation here with, with Kenji on how long he can kick it. He's wearing football shoes, correct? I mean, he's wearing. He's not wearing what, what he would wear. I mean, so I think that sometimes may, when you watch him strike a ball, he's he's doing it in. Yeah, what, what would be a, a running back type of shoe? Yeah, it doesn't look like he's changed. I mean, his shoes are matching, so it doesn't look like he's changed shoes. Uh, Just a little short, a little wide, and that's going to end your half. Ryder 20, old high zero. Yeah. A little back and forth. I mean, like I said, Ryder got off to the early lead, but really back and forth this mid, mid to late second quarter. Short, short fields. Short fields, I think, is really what you're talking about here. I think you saw two Ryder touchdowns come out of the short field position. The Ryder has driven the field once. They've had to do it once, but old high, you got to make them earn everything that they're getting. And, and old high's got to find some big plays of their own coach. Yeah, absolutely. They, they you know, need to go in, make their halftime adjustments, you know, come back out, refocus, and try to get some points on the board. Haven't seen that downfield <laughs> shot to, to Keandre Fleeks yet. Would like to see that. Some of that has to do with the brighter pass rush, though. Brighter pass rush has been there. Yeah, Gibbs is and the, the, two, the Donnell Dark, kid. Donnell. Yeah, and yeah. Those guys are relentless, man. They are. Well, All right. Well, while the band is setting up here, I think if you're old, you got to be big defensively out of, out of the locker room. Yes. Ryder gets yeah, the yeah. Ryder does get the ball first. You cannot. You give up that six coming right out of the locker room. I think that's going to be uh, that could be disastrous for him. But, uh, hey, what an atmosphere, man. And it doesn't feel – it really doesn't feel like a 20 nothing game necessarily the way we just watch the end of this half. I mean, it really feels like it should be closer than that. So, But, hey, we're going to give this over and let the bands perform. Enjoy the Coyote Band. going to be first in the Ryder Band. And uh, we'll pick back up with you here in about uh, 25 minutes or so.
23rd and last, Wicked Paw Falls Legend Band.
Tempo, 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 tempo,
will debut the first two event of our group 2023 UL production entitled Into the Sunset, which is our musical farewell to Ryan Haxel. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pride of the Raiders.
Court Men's Class of 2015, Nicole Pasley, Ben Cooper, Jessica Suter, Billy Suter, and Chris Gaines. Percussion staff includes Jeff Martin. Band officers are Emma Ossovich, Eden Wolf, Chloe Valencia, Abby Fisher, and Michaela Penny. To all our Kyle friends, we have loved the battle with you over the years. And for years to come, we will share stories about who did it better. And many times we will have added you and had enough of your talk, our respect and admiration for you is immensely so much greater. We know what we share with you is special, and without you, we wouldn't be who we are because together, we made one of the great rivalries in the entire state of Texas. There are not enough adequate words to express all the emotions we are feeling to this chapter is coming to a close. So if we say it right, right on, honorable ones. I'm Chad Johnson, Ryder Band alum, class of 1993, and proud Ryder Band parent. Once again, fans, the pride of the Raiders, marching band! Well, even the halftime show felt a little bit different tonight, and I mean, I've seen I've seen my fair share of, of, of marching band halftime shows in my career, and it just you can feel the electricity tonight. I mean, every every fan on each side cheering for each thing that their band did, and it is it's a yeah, and it, you just feel the, the, the special, the air and the magnitude of what tonight means. Just to so many. And uh, still a great crowd here. I mean, for halftime, you know, we said ladder up 20 0 um, at halftime and coming out getting the ball. But uh, it's been a good game. Like I said Old High was a little momentum there at the end of the half. Um, and I'm excited for the second half to see what happens here. Yeah, let me run down some stats here, real quick, guys. And uh, you can let's start with Old High. Uh, just six, I mean, six first downs for Old High. Really, they got that going there in the in the late in the second quarter to get most of them. Uh, only uh, 11 rushing yards, 37 passing yards, and 48 total yards. They have turned the ball over three times, uh, and, and you know that's that's obviously factoring into this 20 nothing score as well. Uh, also a big stat, I think they're one for seven on third downs, and so you see that Riders' defense is succeeding more at getting off the field on third down. Uh, Eric Powell is the leading rusher. He just has seven yards on eight carries. Sage Gravit is seven for 15 for 37 yards, uh, does have two interceptions. Justin Judy is the leading receiver with three catches on 23 yards. Rider side, nine first downs. They got 82 rushing yards, 77 passing, 159 total yards have not turned the ball over what's killing them penalties seven of them for 65 yards riders also three of five on third down though so you've seen that great third down percentage for them uh, individual leaders kenji johnson's got 10 carries for 61 yards joe castles how about this for a sophomore quarterback make a first start very efficient nine of 11 for 77 yards Gray Johnson is the leading receiver. Of course, had the touchdown. Three receptions for 55 yards. So you, you, you hear that. I mean, the stats do tell the story here. Stats can be misleading, but I feel like in this situation, Coach, Coach Bell, let you, you talk a little bit here, say something important. Uh, <laughs> the stats tell a little bit of a story, though. You can see where it kind of got lopsided for a while, and the turnovers are huge. Oh, yeah, in, in a game like this, I mean, ball, ball security is going to be of utmost importance, uh, you know, taking care of that football. Uh, you know, but hopefully right, uh, Old High can, you know, come out and make some halftime adjustments and get this thing rolling. It feels a lot closer than yeah, than, than it actually is, and the score indicates. It really does. I think, like I said, Ryder with those two early early touchdowns, and the game kind of settled. I mean, Old High did a good job defensively, moving the ball a little bit. Um and and you, the two early touchdowns, and you go back to the big third and long, and and, and Castles finds Johnson for a touchdown. Yeah. And really, I mean, just a couple plays here and there, and 
it's it, a, it is a lot closer than what it, it is. It's kind of you, you talk about this. I think it's a coaching cliche, if you will, but weather the storm a little bit. And, and, and Old High has had to. They had to weather that storm early on, and, and, and Ryder was able to, to really get out there and, and, and attack, strike first. And Amy will come and overcome some penalties with some big plays. And so now you're in that old high situation. You weather the storm. you got to do it again, though, because Ryder's getting the ball first. How big is it, Coach, you, you see this, to not give up points coming out of locker, especially when you're already down by 20? Well, well, you know, in the locker room, you know, three and out should have been, you know, with what they talked about uh Coming out, getting a stop, you know, trying to get the ball back to your offense and, and try to get something happening on the offensive end. What would you do? Would you, do you see a change that, that they could make offensively on the old high side? I think they're having some success getting them outside the pocket, you know, moving the pocket a little bit, getting them on the run. Uh, and like I said, those rider defensive ends, they're relentless. So you kind of help the, the line out as well, getting them outside the pocket. You saw Powell come to life too late in that second quarter. Yeah. I mean, and just all, a couple of those runs. So... There's the, there's the moment, as we said, we, we felt the momentum shift. You could feel it in the stadium. You could feel the electricity kind of shift over to the old high side. That interception does deflate it a little bit. But, uh, it, it, you know, that there's, it's not like old high is just – this has been different. I would say that this has been different than past the, the past few Ryder Old High games. Whereas, yeah, it's twenty nothing right now. This game would have been forty to nothing at halftime in the past couple of years. And that's just, I mean, Coach Coach Holly, you you've been here. I think you can attest to that. It would have already snowballed to an insurmountable total. It, it really had that look early, and and then, like I said, Old High. You look at the run they made last year, and defensively playing well, and all those playoff games, once it kind of settled, that defense showed up and, it, and it's making Ryder work here. Um, but again, kind of going back to it, I think this this is a big a big moment in this game is coming off after this kickoff here. If you're old high, you gotta you got to stop them, get them out, maybe a, a three and out or a turnover, or just make them stall and, and get the ball back and go see if you can find something. Let me let me run down some area scores for us real quick. Again, big it's the third opening night. Last night, you know, Coach Bell and the Hershey Huskies, they went down to Andrews, beat Clint in a neutral side game, 34 to nothing. Uh, Westbrook, uh, number one Westbrook, fell to number six Knox City last night, 34 to 24. Big win for the Greyhounds to open the season. Uh, Vernon Northside, they beat Patton Springs last night, 51 to six. Also in action last night was Nocona. They won 42 to 22 over Era. Uh, Benjamin, they uh, uh, used the uh, 45 point mercy rule tonight as they so often do. 80-33 to 33 over Follett. Kroll beat Strong tonight, also by the 45-point mercy rule. 100-55. Uh, uh, to 55. Got to love six-man football, right? 100 points on the opening night. Uh, uh, Alney is... Oh, wow. That's a final. Alvord beats Alney. 13-12. to 12. Low scoring affair there. Out in Iowa Park, the Hawks are up on holiday 7-6. to six. Uh, Henrietta and Winthorpe. It's halftime. Winthorpe holding the one-point lead, 15 to 14. Vernon leads City View, 27 to six. Archer City is taking it to Quana, 37 to nothing. Uh, let's see, Monday is losing to Mercy Culture Prep, 67 to nothing. Uh, Santo is up on Electra, 20 to eight. Jacksville and Breckenridge are in a shootout. 42-35 in the th fourth quarter. Jacksville up on Breckenridge. Burke Burnett is up on Bridgeport, 20-7. Uh, Seymour's pulled away from Anson. That one's 28-14. And uh, Graham up on Bowie, 42-6. Of course, it's 20 to nothing here. Ryder leading the Coyotes. Both teams back on the field now. And again, Ryder going to receive first. Do you, do you? What do you draw up? Well, how much do you discuss the first few plays of the of the second half whenever you're working with the team coach, Bell? Uh, you know, some 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 OCs will, will go in the halftime. They'll they'll rescript. You know, a brand new play. You know, top top twelve list. Uh, or some guys will just, it'll just be a field thing uh, where they'll they'll go back to some of the stuff that they had success with in the first half and uh, you know just kind of make it look a little different with some window dressing. Uh, but you know whatever whatever works for those guys. I mean, if, if you're Ryder here, you think we'll see a big dose of Kenji Johnson here on this. Uh 
you, you feel like I mean that that's really been the most steady, successful part of what you've done. I mean, not I mean again, Castles has been very efficient. Yes. But but Kenji Kenji has looked like the best weapon on the field tonight for them. And, you know, usually when you have a young quarterback, you know, a running game, a running game can make his job a little that's, easier. That's your best friend. Right? Let Castles right. get real comfortable tonight Absolutely. already. I mean, yeah. yeah. The uh, we get things situated here. Fans getting back in their seats a little bit. Uh, of course, the, you've just seen a lot of them. There's, if you can't really see it in the in the screen right now, in the picture that you have in front of you uh, on the live stream. But I mean, the 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 grassy hills on both sides are filled up. Fans all all along there. Great atmosphere tonight. Here's the kick. Jimmy with the kick. Ryder, no fair catch. We're going to take There's a lot of speed here on the corner. <laughs> oh, Turf monster. Got him. 25 here. For a little extra here, but uh, Anthony Davis with, with yeah, the turn there. Well, you usually get the, the pooch kick, you kind of get the fair catch, but he he uh, he did a good job of uh, found an opportunity, and he had a lane. I really thought he was going to hit that lane and go, but yeah, Turf Monster comes up and grabs those shoelaces. And so Ryder, first possession of the second half, will take over at the on 47 yard line. Big possession here for both teams. Or this big drive here for each. Here we go. Castles. With Tyrone Morgan in the backfield. He'll get the ball, find some blocks. It's a couple blocks taken down by number 12. And already a flag here to start the second half. A little extra stuff out here on the rider sideline. This one might be on the Coyotes. Jacoby Clay with the tackle there. Now nope, they're looking Ryder's way. After the play, unfortunate conduct. Offense number 67, 15-yard penalty. It'll be second down. No announcement, so that must be 67's uh, first unsportsmanlike conduct. It's Norman Mindy, Mindietta. You hope it is. That's a, that's a big piece of their offensive line. Yeah, just, just another... Big penalty that backs up Ryder. Yeah, that's going to be their eighth penalty of, of the of the night. And I think we're they're up to uh, 80 yards in penalty yardage. Two receivers near side, back to Morgan. Old High get, Old High's getting to the they've been getting to the ball since the middle of the second quarter. Pack of and coyotes they, yeah. there. Pack of coyotes on defense. And it, you, you see Morgan fighting, but uh, the, yeah, there's too many white jerseys in the vicinity that time. About third and 17. Oh, Old High has what they wanted out of halftime right here with this big with this play. Get a favor. I mean, you yeah. Need, yeah. And, and they've got to take advantage here. That penalty is a, is, a, is a drive killer. It is definitely a drive killer. You see, Mindy Adam, he's the he's the left tackle here. This is his third year starting on this team. Cohen Maroney up top. Castles drops back. It's down here. Big throw across. Oh. Nice hit to finish that play. Don't get the extras. Gray Johnson <laughs> incomplete. This house taking care of their own there. <laughs> yes, <they did. laughs> That's Ivory Kelly came in and just kind of and, and knocked. And it's his it it twin brother. So it's twin, he went out there and took care of the twin brother. <laughs> the family affair. That's right. <laughs> So right around the punt, I know we, we talked about it a little bit at halftime, but this is exactly what Old High wanted here to start the second half to get back in this game. I don't know if she's here tonight. I know last year that the, the Kellys, the, their mother, she was a she was a devout, uh, devout I should say, uh, uh, a watcher subscriber to this to this stream. So uh, I, I'm sure she probably liked that seeing that one a little bit. Johnson with a good angled punt to the sideline. It's going to take a bounce and go out of bounds, 26 yard line. So. So Kenzie Johnson maybe catching a cramp there after the punt. Man, I saw a lot of cramps last night. I saw a lot. Of course, it was a 6 p.m. kickoff that I was at last night, and so the cramps were happening like crazy. But, you know, this heat, that is a factor here. Because I mean, yeah, the sun's down. It's still hot outside. 
And so that is a factor to watch throughout the second half. And I think with the change of rules sometimes, too, it's hard to condition for this heat, too, for, yes. for a full game. And, and, Coach, you know that more than I do do football in the fall, but it's kind of hard to get ready in, in the time you have. It's definitely tough to get, get ready for that heat. A lot here to Powell, step out of bounds, yeah. maybe loses a yard. Ran out of field there Goes on that side. Second and 11. Ran out of field. You probably want to see him maybe run that route a little. Curl it in probably a little more soon. Uh, that, that would be my guess. I'm looking to see more fleeks this second half. Let's see if we can find him in one of these passes here. Well, Old House showing the two back. They hadn't shown that, I don't think, in the Back to half. Powell. The rider catches him again in the backfield. Another right at the line of scrimmage or a loss of one. The Kate Carson Ayers getting off the bottom of that pal. And, and again, seeing him, he's a little hobbled right now. Third and 11. And they're going to bring Ayers. is going to pop out. Donnell is coming on. Of course, I think that would happen regardless because this is a pass rushing mm -hmm. down. Trip receiver high for old high. So Jalen Gibbs just dropped back into the middle linebacker here in a 3-3 look. Powell in the backfield. Gravit talking to his line, drops back. Gibbs gets through, chasing Gravit. Gravit's going to get away, but gets tripped up by Gibbs. Picks up one yard, but fourth and, fourth and nine, old high. A great, I mean, great job by Gibbs. You saw that. I mean, they dropped him back to that middle linebacker spot, and that's why they want him in this this that that defense, that three three stack, because you don't know which gap he's going to be blitzing. Least favorite defense to try to call plays against, Kyle. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah, three three stack. Three stack. Yes. Yeah, easy, hands down. Seen a lot more of it at the high school ranks, too, it feels like. Braylon Kinsey on the punt. Tyrone Morgan back to receive for Ryder. A bouncing kick. Morgan's going to field it and try to run. Got a flag, a lot of flags on the play. <laughs> Whatever happened, every official on the field saw. Tyrone Morgan on return. Yellow laundry all over the field. Kyle's tackling him, tackle him at the 48. We'll see what the flags are. There's so much garbage and trash thrown at the kid. He thought he told, told a bad <laughs> joke on stage or something. It's, man, that was a bad joke itself. So <laughs> you guys would throw a water bottle at me. During the return, illegal walk in the back. Return team number five. TDR penalty for the solid foul. First down. So Ryder, after the penalty, they will have first and 10 at their own 36. 8.53 left here in the third quarter. Ryder still leading 20-0. An old, old high defense playing well right now. Handoff ball to Johnson. Johnson gets through, makes a couple people miss, gets enough for a first down. He's just got a little stuff after the play. Here. We're cleaning it up. He's a hard runner, coach. Man, and then the whole of that time. There wasn't no patience that time. He didn't have to be patient. No, no, he hit that thing like he got shot out of a cannon. Yeah. You see that big. You see that kind of field. You see nothing but green in front of you. Ryder into Coyote territory at the 49, first and 10. Two receivers high for Ryder. Castle's looking low here for Gray Johnson. Almost incomplete, almost intercepted. Chance to be intercepted. But man, there is a little bit extra after every single play right now. And Coach, Coach said, this game's still close. I mean, it's still, you get a break. Yeah, right there, there. I mean, it's. They're right there on the brink. Yeah. <clears throat> You can, and, and not that there haven't been enough 15-yard penalties in the game. I think you're about to start seeing some more, though. Things are getting a little chippy. Referees are going to want to get this back under control. Second and 10 from the 49. Johnson in the backfield. He'll take the handoff, gets through, and a couple more cows. Oh, big hit there to keep Johnson from not getting the first down. I think that was number four, D. Kelly. Kyle's returning tackler from last season comes up and makes a big hit. A 
Kevin Rios enters the game for Ryder. Back to Johnson. You see it again. Yeah, just getting his head down. When he finds contact, like he, it's, it's, it's not when he stops. You know, he is getting yards after contact almost every time. I can only think of one time where he was stopped in the backfield. Getting close to 100 yards. Let me check. Hey, Corey Hogue. Thank you to Corey Hogue, by the way. Yeah, third, he's at 90 yards on 30 yards. Carries, but yeah, Corey Hogue helping me out with stats tonight. Tally back in for Ryder. Good tackle there by Old High. A little more after the play. Another personal foul for Ryder. And if, 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 if this is on Norman Mindy, and he's holding his arms out like it might be, but it, it may, I, now I'm looking at it, the body language suggests it's not, but if it's on Mindietta, he's done. And Coach, if you're watching it here, I know we're, we're still we're still blocking downfield, but when, when, is, when is enough on, on these plays? I mean, I mean that's, that's, that's tough. I mean, those yeah. guys, you know, they, they can't hear whistles. There's a lot of stuff going on, so that, that's just a tough situation. Yeah. Okay, so another 15-yard penalty on Ryder. Back him up. It'll be, says first down. I think we're, yeah, I think we're second, second down. Second yeah. and 25. Just if you're Ryder, I mean, like I said, you're just killing your momentum as you go. I mean, it's just very, get a couple positive plays and then, you're backing yourself up. It sucks the air. I mean, you can even feel it. It just feels like you suck the air out of your crowd and everything. Morgan in motion. Castle drops back. Looking for Johnson deep. Gets over. And it's a catch. Touchdown rider. Gray Johnson. He's scoring runner for a touchdown. I and another big down and long for Ryder and what touchdown. A, I mean, what a what a read by by Castles to come off of that what would be his first read, keep it alive and look down field coach. Yeah, it looked like they had the screen set up and uh, Old High read it well, and he went to a second option, and the guy got behind the cornerback. Great job by the quarterback. It's, it's got to be hard, coach. You know, you get him in a second and twenty-five like that, and you just. Uh, yeah, that's that's demoralizing for a defense. And, and it's Ryder's sec second touchdown being, what, third and 20, right, second yeah, and 25. Right, yeah. Just Ryder going for two, up 26 0, 632 left in the third. And flags are delay a game, so back Ryder up. Delay a game, offense number 12, one yard penalty. That'll bring on the extra point team now to, to kick it, I'm sure. Yeah, and then they're going to let uh, this will be the third kicker they've tried to use. So Ashton Pascal, is this another soccer kid? Pascal? It is. Yeah. <laughs> so he's going to get his shot at, at an extra point now. And his extra point was a little longer than the other guys, too. So he can go back and say that. He's wearing John Bailey uh, on the back of his jersey, by the way. So Ashton Pascal with extra points. Like I said, an abundance of soccer kids on both these teams. So it's... are not wearing the names of their names on the back of their jerseys. They're wearing the names of legendary Ryan Raiders of the past. Cool 
idea for Robert to do. It really was. You know, Coach Vendel told me about it early on, and, and I know he got some help from, from Marty McBride. And, you know, Marty's got a yeah. wealth of knowledge about Ryder and its history, and I, I use Marty as well. He was one of the voters on my on, on my list the, of greatest, you know, athletes in WFISD history this past week. So, like, uh, and I think it's going to be a fun year for all three of these teams to just kind of uh, celebrate the past. I mean, yeah. I know you also probably have stuff going on at Hershey as well, Coach. And just kind of enjoy these lists. I mean, hopefully another 12, 13 weeks of football. And, and yeah. It's tough, you know, and I know it's a tough situation for so many. I, I know it is. <laughs> and plus we've, we've gone at length about it, but I am glad so many people have. Like, okay, it's time to move forward. Right. Like, right. let's enjoy this last year. You, you got to move forward. And Titus Black with the kick. Go put it up. And I think, I think that is Keaton Evans' third or fourth fair catch of the night. So, Ohio will take over it, it feels 28. Like, I feel something extra from the crowd, almost like after the whistle. <laughs> Every time I'm looking, okay, where's who's, who's doing what? Okay, something. I got my own head on a swivel. Six thirty-two left to go in the third. Old High's second possession of the second half. New quarterback in for Old High, Cameron Jones. Okay, and you know he was in the battle. He, he started at linebacker last year as a sophomore and was the backup quarterback. I think, Coach, like I said, you got the scrimmage against him. He a little more. Uh, he could scramble too a little bit too. I know. Yeah, he, he's more of their of their zone read guy. Yeah. You know, give him that that run option. It's good, and I, I think he throws a good ball too. I mean, he's got a he's got a strong enough arm. You saw it. I mean, you know, that was to a you know he was in the middle of the field and hit that one out on the sideline. Four yard gain for Ohio second and six on their own thirty two. Beasley wrapped up and. In the backfield, loss of three. And now that looked like his own read to me yeah. right there, and then one that the quarterback probably should have kept. Carson right. Ayers with the tackle, sorry. Third and ten. Beasley looks a little hobbled, but he's getting off the field. Two receivers each side. Powell in the backfield. Tight to the formation. Going to be a delay of game. We got third and 15 here. Clock moving, 5.30 left to play in your third quarter. Jalen Gibbs, that middle linebacker spot again. He'll just drop back. Jones rolls out, tries to find him. Gets shoved and shoved down by number 11, Elijah Jackson. Bring up fourth down, 15 for old high. And on comes the punt team. Coach, is it hard when you switch quarterbacks mid-game to kind of find a groove, too? I mean, just it's kind of like starting it over, isn't it? A little, a little yeah, that's, bit just, that's, that's a tough situation, you know, for a quarterback to... to but they've been doing a lot. They've been doing a lot of nursery <laughs> the last couple of years. <laughs> we have a little experience going yeah. on. <laughs> Flag on the play. It'll be a false start here. The situation is a little different from what y'all were doing, though, right. because because your your two guys knew knew what they were getting into. In this situation, I mean, you don't go into a game and say, okay, you got the first half, you got the second half. Not typically, not a game like this. Anyway. Right, right. So we're going to see the field position battle here. Those going to be back in Ryder's favor. 
And it's Jordan McKenzie punt. with a punt right there to Morgan. He's going to field it and try to run. It's by a couple tacklers. Finally drugged down. Looks like that by number 25, Roman Lunsford. Really thought he was going to catch that. Uh, I was surprised he was trying to do that with so many white jerseys around him. Quick little break here, you know, kind of reading your list through the Times Record News of the coaches and players and all that. Have you gotten to talk to any of these older players? Have you, have you gotten a chance to, anybody reached out and you just... Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I've had a couple reach out. And of course, I've talked to some of them over the years anyway. Um, uh, you know, unfortunately, so many of the ones that, you know, the guys that are on the top of those lists, you know, are no longer with us. Um... But the list was so much fun. I do. I, I, I most of the, the remarks I've gotten are positive. I know there's a couple people upset they weren't on the list. Morgan slips, slips through. He may get to the end zone. Tyrone Morgan, 41 yards. Rider touchdown. He doesn't need to see much daylight. He does not need to see much daylight to go find it. Did, uh, did, did, you, did you ever see his, his, his uncle or, or, or dad play? I seen, I seen dad, I seen uncle. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it's a lineage. I mean, he's... Yeah. He, hey, you don't forget a nickname like Pumpkin Morgan. Right, right. He was, <laughs> Pumpkin was a beast. Yeah. Pumpkin was a beast. Tyrone's dad was a beast as well. Yeah. Kenzie Johnson on for the extra point. Kick is good. 4.13 left to go in your third quarter. Extra point is good. It's Ryder 34. Hold high zero. And now you feel, I mean, the snowball is finally here. I think, you know, it's, it's, it's turned a little bit into an avalanche. And it's, at this point, it, it's hard for, for, uh, for Old High to dig out this. Yeah, Old High's uh, stands are looking a little, a little light, too, <laughs> like everyone's. <laughs> Getting up out of here. They see him starting to play. I'm moving the park. I'm telling you, it is not. I, I, one of my first Ryder Old High games I came to, it was so hard to, to actually get out of the parking lot. I remember I, I had a, uh, there was a lady here. She was from New York. And she was a reporter coming just to take pictures of the game. And I, I had to, I, her car was trapped in the middle of like four cars all around it. And I, she asked me, and I can't believe she, my friends and my, and my wife, they're hearing this, and she asked, like this woman asked me to remove her car from that situation. I'm like the worst person to ask in those <laughs> situations. Too. I can't back up a car to save my life. But I got hers out. It's one of my pride, proudest uh, driving moments. But no, it is hard to get out of that parking lot right now, I promise. Kenji Johnson, the kick for the Raiders. Fair catch for Keaton Evans. You know, I know it's it's getting a little bit late in the game that the crowds are clearing out a little bit, but but I really hope you see crowds like this at these games. You need to be if, if you're listening to us or watching, you gotta get to a game this year for these three high schools. I know Hershey coach we talked about, three home games. We need to see crowds for those games. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, indeed. Indeed. The nothing like Friday night. No. Nothing well, like Friday night lights. It's a it's a historic game. This is a historic season. Like, it, it's the entire thing. And, and I mean, absolutely. All three of these teams are going to make the playoffs. I'll say that right now. I, I don't have a doubt in my mind. 100% guarantee all three of these teams will make the playoffs. And so you're going to have football for a long time in this city this year. Powell with his biggest run of the night makes it through a couple tacklers. About a 30-yard gain right there for Eric Powell. Getting the Kyle's moving a little bit in the second oh, half. He just, and Eric Powell just got a flag. Eric Powell just got a flag. And Eric Powell's coming out of the game, and, and Coach Freeman's right there on him. Yeah, he's not happy. After the play, the short line conduct, offense goes 28. And like I said, coming out to the stadium, all three of these teams have such. The electric guys, I mean, like I said, the, the running backs at Hershey, Ryder, and Old High, you, you're going to see some good football when you come out here. So, I mean, they all got athletes, all got players. It's fun to watch when you get out here. So. I mean, I was talking about with Hershey at, at, at halftime with, with, with Coach Bell. I mean, they, they got a kid that almost made our top 25 list in Javion Frazier. 
And, I mean, you're talking about that he's the career sack leader at Hershey, and he's still got one season to go. And he's going to play some running back this year. And, and so you got a kid like that just at Hershey. Um, and, of course, Hershey has been putting out, you know, such great athletes, Division One athletes year after year anyway. But you just, Cameron Jones keeps it, gets it around the edge, makes a couple of nice moves and picks up almost, we'll see whether they mark it, almost enough for a first down. And there was, you know, and a great job by Jones fighting through that as well. And you, and you see that, and I kind of like that, adding that extra dimension to the ground game here. I, I mean, I think that the old guy's got three legitimate running backs that can kind of get back there and hurt you. You just saw Eric Powell and, and what he can do in the open field. Uh, Jordan Mitchell is, is somebody to watch out for. Ian Beasley in the open field is, is, is dangerous. First down Coyotes on the rider, 41. Powell back of the game in motion. Jones is going to keep it. Makes a nice little cut. Gets out to the outside. Looking for a block. Shut that down. Number 14 just coming in there. Isaiah Watson like a heat-seeking missile as he got to the outside. Watching this replay. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> if he doesn't cut that back in, we're looking at a, I mean, that's a highlight film type of hit. Got a man coming in motion, handoff coming up there. No, it's a fake. And then the ball batted down as Jones is trying to hit the, the, the uh, motion man coming to the outside. Number 11, Elijah Jackson, another one of these uh, Archer City kids coming in. And I guess we're going to bring in special guests as Zach Duncan trades places. We got the uh, head soccer coach leaving and the assistant boys soccer coach taking his place here. Yeah, I uh, worked with Coach Holly last year. Yeah, we had soccer guys on the broadcast. I think yeah. there's something about us. <laughs> we, can, we can do this maybe. Maybe not coach soccer, but we can call football games. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Great crowd tonight. That's what I was going to talk about. Man, that was pretty awesome. I mean, this place was completely full. Yeah, Jones goes deep. And uh, couldn't c connect there as he tries to get deep down the left side. Yeah, you've been out there out in the crowd. Uh, I've had you. I got you on assignment to write a story here to uh, to talk uh, to talk about the atmosphere of this place. And so I, I, I'm trusting you, you've done some some work while you're out I, there. I've done some, but a couple of people kind of cut out a little bit early. I guess the heat the, the uh -huh. heat's been awful or whatever. So I had to do a phone interview from with the guy, uh, uh, the first quarterback from Old High who played in this game, Ryder. He says the Coyote King because it was yeah. a standing room only type game in there too. So what was his name? Uh, Billy Johnson. He was junior that year, so he's a quarterback the first two years at Old High. Uh, he they went three and seven his first year. They, those were when they played the Ryder Deer and Water type teams. He, he talked yeah. about those kind of guys a little bit. So um, I saw man, there's been a lot of great people now. So I saw uh, Jason Lavender down there on the Old High sideline. Couple oh, really? High that grades. Awesome. Uh, T.J. Vasher was down there in the Ryder sideline. Um, I asked Nick Dark after Gray Johnson caught a touchdown pass. I go, do you get like that part of that stat too since the jersey's as dark as on the pass? <laughs> and, and, and he goes, he goes, well, I already own the, the school record, so I'm good. <laughs> so, like, like, I mean, I, I didn't know how to respond to that one. Or Jed Castles is down, a bunch of former Ryder great players down there on the sideline tonight, so all having a good time. You can't, can't miss TJ. Like, TJ's, I feel like he's 6'10", and I know he's only like 6'6 six, six or 6'7". Six, yeah. but No, he's got a presence, though. Yeah, he, he's really tall. So, um... But yeah, the impressive crowd, and like I said, there's still a, a pretty good sized crowd here left. I, I'm hoping they all kind of stick it out, soak, soak in these last few minutes, because like I said, this is ooh. Oh, Maroney did, trying to trick play here as a handoff, and he is a backup quarterback. Oh, you're going to get a blindside block. <laughs> blindside block on the quarterback. You don't see that very often. No. Yeah, yeah. No. He. Talk again. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was trying to get your book. Your mic is working just now. Okay. So, yeah, so. Um, yeah. yeah, blindside. Yeah, you, you, ever, you, know, you ever had a quarterback? You ever throw a blindside block, Coach? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, you know, I was in the triple option offense, so, <laughs> so yeah. You I, had to get out there. I, yeah, I had to block. But yeah. did they call it back then? Like, you had no, a better, no, had a better uh, chance uh, to get away with it back then. Yeah. So, <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna mention Maroney, the backup quarterback. You know, got got that handle. Uh, he he gonna, he's been coming out to the tennis courts. I'm the head tennis coach at Ryder. He's been coming out to the tennis courts. He was talking a lot of noise this week. So we played a few games. Uh, let's just say uh, Maroney cannot beat me in tennis as of right, <laughs> as of right now. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna call him out on on the broadcast. But uh, he's a good kid, but not great at tennis. Handoff up the middle, Elijah Jackson, and you see the difference again in the running backs. You've seen three different runners. For, for Ryder, and I think all three are very different guys. I mean, you, you can see it yourself, Coach Bell. What are you seeing the difference of? I mean, it's, it's it's tough for a defense to prepare for. You know, you almost have to scout two or three different different running backs. So that's that's definitely a good good asset to have. I was impressed. I mean, I think Ryder's pretty confident for running game. Just hearing Coach Bindle, you know, and talk to you and, and other media. Uh, third, the first touchdown, third and goal from the seven, and they run it. They don't throw it, and, yeah. they, and then they score on that. So I, I think they feel like uh, they have multiple backs that can do different things, and then they they're real impressed with their offensive line this year. Offensive line, I mean, you got, I mean, you got, I believe, three starters up front, but I mean, it's it's headlined by two seniors, in Cape Johnson, and then your left tackle, uh, uh, Mendietta. And, See what the flag is. I mean, it was a pre-snap penalty. I don't know if who they're going to call it on. Some discussion here. A lot of penalties tonight. A lot of, <laughs> and, and you get that. And you get that in this game, I think. Anyway, anyway. Right, right. But first game, you know, as, as we really haven't had it as many turnovers. Like last year, we had a ton of turnovers. Yeah. I think each team had about four or five. How many turnovers did we have tonight? We had the interception there right before. Then I bet three turnovers by Old High. Uh, Ryder has not turned the ball over. I mean, three. I think last year at this time we were at ten or eleven. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, yeah, it was, it was like a turnover. Oh, hey, you gave it to us. We're gonna give it back to y'all because that seems like the nice thing to do. Let's see what Ryder in a, a, a heavy set there out of the pistol. The three backs back there. It's gonna be play action. Snuck one out um, on the wheel route. And Tyrone Morgan, they're going to find him for the first down. All three of these Ryder backs have been really tough to tackle tonight. Too. That, was, that was a great play design uh, by Ryder. Great play design. You see, again, all three backs in the backfield at one time, and yet you, you run the play action. And then that's what I mean. I think you see that set with two backs, and you got the one deep. You think it run, right? They run 100%. 100%. They, uh, they do a good job of keeping castles in good situations too. Yeah. I feel like just by how they block and the, the routes they run he hasn't had to run for his life a lot and he's kind of been I mean, just the routes that they're running yeah. it's kind of the offensive game plan has been really good and then the play calling by Ben Nelson I think has been fantastic tonight as you get this time Morgan getting the hand off to the right to the right side of the line going off tackle and that's another first down and we've kind of reached the, the stage of the game too, where it's kind of like we don't want to get even hurt. You know, either, either team, like okay, <laughs> like I mean, this, I mean, I, I don't know if like I mean, old like get on the board. But I think we kind of know the outcome's kind of determined at this point. But let's just keep everybody healthy. We got big games next week. I, I know old high. Who do they have? They have uh, they have Hereford next week. They have Hereford next. And week. And then yeah. Decatur's coming here. Yeah. Y'all got a big game next week. Yeah. Going, to, going to Brock, yes, Texas. Yes, yeah. Y'all excited about that one? Oh yeah. Imagine. Oh yeah. How, how's Brock? Look? I mean, I guess you may have not known this yet, but Brock's still pretty stout, I imagine. Oh yeah, Brock is Brock. Yeah, Brock is Brock. Morgan gets loose on the left side this time, and he's going to run that one all the way down inside the ten-yard line. And again, doing a great job following his blockers. And then, listen, he's going to make guys miss. Good stiff arm out there. And again, you've seen so many times these rider running backs have finished the play still standing up. Play's over, but they're still up on their feet. Getting out quick, throwing out. Great play design. Wow. Great play design. I've been calling him down at the two. Oh, he he must have stepped out, out of bounds. Yeah. But the play design on that, which I want to see the replay. They went they went five wide. They had Kingy in the slot on the right side, and they just did a quick screen out there and had those other two guys blocking. It was a... Again, got up there so fast. The fact that you can do that with a sophomore quarterback. 
who's playing his – I mean, yeah, he plays some varsity football. But, again, we can't say it enough. This is a different level of varsity football. Well, I'll say this much, and just because I'm up at Ryder a ton of time, like he's always up there. He's up there at 7, 8 in the morning work. I mean, the kid works his butt off. And you expect that. Coach's kid, quarterback, you know, that you expect that. But uh, I've been impressed. He's just always around, always learning the game, and it kind of shows here. Well, wouldn't be a Ryder game, but we don't see the box, right? And the box was going to end up in a touchdown for Elijah Jackson, but I think that's going to be a pre-snap penalty that backs right. I don't think we were set. Oh, we uh, oh. well, that's going to be declined. Is it substitution on the defense? So oh, yeah, touchdown. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, that was about the most anticlimactic touchdown <laughs> I've, uh, uh, I've seen so far this season. But, you know, we are just starting. It, it, it was very first low, night, right? very low uh, yeah, first night, I guess. standard. But yeah. <laughs> you had a good game last night, huh? Not, Not a fun City. game. I had a fun game. Knox City beating uh, beating Westbrook, uh, number one team, two-time defending state champs, 34-24. Kind of a slugfest for a six-minute yeah, game. Yeah, that's a, that's a as, low as scoring As we just game. read off some scores here, and Kroll put up 100 points tonight. Oh, wow. And, uh, uh, that's good, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 100 points and one by the 44 5 court mercy rule. Extra point is up and good. And so 16 seconds left here in the third quarter, and it is a 41 nothing. Ryder in absolute command. They've just taken this over here in the third quarter, Coach, and you just haven't seen Coyotes being able to really mount a response. Yeah, yeah, it's been, been tough. It's been tough. You know, it's... Being an Ohio alum, you know, it's it's it's, it's, it's hard to watch. Hard yeah, to watch. I mean, you, how much is that is still, like is 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 in you still? I mean, because I know you're at Hershey, and I mean, I know that blue runs deep on you right now too. But but I mean, black and red always, right? Oh yeah, yeah. The the tradition at Ohio is, you know, it, it never leaves. It, yeah. it never leaves. It's what Ohio needs to remember this though. Last year, I think was it 58 10 or something like it that, was. and no one remembers that. Everyone remembers four rounds deep. Should have should have beat Decatur. Yeah. Had the you know the bad call that. No, like, Everyone remembers that. So, like, this doesn't define your season. Yeah, you want to win the last one of these, and uh, you, you want to have a good showing for the fans. But, like, this doesn't matter, grand scheme of things. You know, I mean, no, you can still win the district title. You can right. still go play deep into the season. So, And, and it's, it, it, it is what it is. I mean, Ryder has been the stronger program for, I mean, I mean for the most part of 20 years. And, and you know, the, 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 the wins have been few in the past 20 years of this rivalry, and then it's just the hard fact of it. What was your uh, record in this rival- rivalry series? I'm putting you on the spot, I know, but like... I, I, didn't, I didn't lose to Ryder. You didn't lose to Ryder. So no, I, say, I, I was thinking I you probably won more than you lost, yeah. so... <laughs> Definitely. That, uh, that glory years of the, the Coyotes there in the late, late 90s, early 2000s. Um, yeah, yeah. What was it like? Because this town, I always said, this town is different when the Coyotes are great. And so, what was what was the support like from the community back then? When you guys, you know, you because you were you were there for the, the the semifinal run, and then I know you took over a quarterback shortly after that. I mean, what was it like at that time? I mean, just uh, just just a lot of a lot of guys came out, a lot of a lot of support. Uh, like I said, the whole city backed us. E- even when the other schools weren't playing, uh, we, we had their support. So it was pretty cool to see the, the, the city come together. It was pretty cool to see everybody come together for, for a cause. The Coyotes, they handed off Jordan Mitchell on that play. He stopped at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be second and ten. And that's going to wrap it up for the third quarter. 41 nothing. Ryder holding the lead. Uh, well, not just holding. Dominating the lead right now. So 12 minutes left in this game. Um... Zach, you're uh what, what was, is, is Holly gone? Did he leave? No, no, I'm about to. Holly, he, he's already he's subbing sub, me out. Yeah, yeah, out. yeah. He yeah, had a line change. He was, he was not uh, impressed by my performance. And <laughs> he, he was. Uh, he's looking for a new assistant coach. He, he, he ran. <laughs> he ran some kids today at practice, and he's running me off now here. So, but yeah, I appreciate stopping by. Always yeah, good seeing yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, dude. Hey, great seeing you, man. Yeah, I haven't seen you in a while. So take care. Uh, good so, luck next week against Brock. So, um, the uh, yeah, get get that story. In a deadline. Yeah, I got. I got to find some people who haven't left at halftime. I, I a couple guys. I'm over two on interviews, but don't worry. I'll, I'll figure something out. Well, here's Coach Holly, and he'll he'll do the heavy lifting. Here now. I can promise you that. Yeah. Thanks, Zach, for coming in and stopping by. And, and uh, listen, I want to take I want to take a, a moment here, Coach Bell. Man, last year, last year we were as we can see the swing pass here. 
out to to uh, to Powell. He'll get up the field for a few yards, and it'll be third down. But that's your coach, Coach Bell. You weren't at the stadium for a single game. You were you were watching the live stream. You were listening to me all the time. If people that don't know, yes, sir. Uh, coach Coach Bell had a uh, had, had uh, colon cancer, and and fought it. And man, a year later, cancer free. Yes, sir. It, it, it's, it's a great feeling. Yeah, great feeling. I mean, yesterday was was a monumental moment. Just being back on the sidelines, it, it just it just felt right. It just felt right. Another great play by Isaiah Watson. He's flashed a few times for Ryder out there on the corner. Uh, holding up there really well, and then that time attacking us to a quick hit screen out on the wide receiver. But uh, uh, getting getting back, I know that, that the kids and, and the players like that was a big part of uh, of your motivation. I mean, what what does it mean to you to first to, to be coaching, but but yeah, to, to have the players and to support the system that you had. I mean, it, it, it meant everything in the world to me. Uh, you know, those those some of those nights, you know, after after the chemo and uh, you know, it, it, it gets rough. So just to have those support, the phone calls, the prayers, the the text messages. I mean, it was it was everything. It got me through some dark times. This is a short punt here. Is going to get the rider going to take the ball back over at the 44. You, uh, I, I know you. You kind of lived in the uh, in the the pocket of a, of a, of Coach Nash last year. How often were you lighting up his phone during a game? Uh, I, I was I was calling probably four or five times. I mean, just, you know. <laughs> Just hitting him up, just trying to help him where I could. Just trying yeah. to get my input in. But it was like a little bit of a delay, right? Yeah. Like they yeah. actually like what they're seeing on the on the on the screen on the live stream. This is a little bit of a delay. Right. So yeah. So the messages I'm sending them, they're they're getting them. <laughs> a little late. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> hey, throw the throw the fade. Right. We just threw the fade. We just have <laughs> Ryder takes over here. They're gonna come out in the shotgun set. Man in motion coming across the formation. Handoff gonna take the jet sweep. Puts his head down, going to get forward for a few yards. That's Camden Self getting in as we're starting to see some of the second teamers come there in, in, into the game. The uh, if we can real quick, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I know I'm getting off the subject of this game a little bit, but hey, it, it's 41 to nothing. But you got to with the Huskies last night. I mean, give us a little bit more on on how you guys played last night against Clint. I, I thought we played. I thought we played well. I mean, the the mistakes. You know, first game mistakes. They're 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 kind of expected. Uh, a lot of stuff we got to clean up. A lot of stuff we got to clean up. We watched it today uh, after school, and uh, hopefully we'll learn from it and and be ready for Brock next week. Yeah, and then the, that kind of kind of battle. I mean, Brock. And again, I said it earlier in the broadcast. And, and Coach Holly, you were here. You weren't you watching Hershey Brock? I mean, best game I saw last year, Hershey Brock. Uh, like without a doubt. I mean, yeah, it was. Right. And, and I, I wrote about it after the fact, and I talked about we did a you know top fifty most mem- memorable games at, at Memorial Stadium, and and just about all of us agreed like that game would have made the list. We're making Coach Holly hold the microphone now as a. Uh, Got a timeout here. Players, I think that's a cramp. And surprised we haven't seen more cramping. Give, give the uh, training staff some help, some, some credit here. We were, cramp, we were cramping cr- quite a bit last night. Yeah. Is it on? No. There you go. Now I get you. With, with the rules and stuff now, I think, Coach, we've talked about before, just it's hard to, even soccer-wise now, pre- prepare, prepare for the – the full game in the heat, but you know you're you're inside and you're outside, and I know Ryder was inside some this week for practice, and it's it's just hard to get ready for the for the yeah. It's, and, and it's it's almost it's impossible, the, particularly the heat of this summer. Yes, it's impossible. Handoff goes up the middle. That's Dre Donnell getting the carries now, and he's going to get uh, looks like eight yards. Out to the, uh, the the 50 yard line, so call it seven yards. It'll be third down and three from there. So both teams are like kind of just ready to put a bow on this one, and then Zach kind of pointed to it. Get out healthy. At Get this out point. healthy. That's, that's the main thing. You hope that the extracurriculars after the snap it, it's finally finally done as well. I should have mentioned, you know, Cohen Maroney's taking over a quarterback. Donnell able to avoid a tackler in the backfield, get up the field, and he'll have the first down. 
And, and Donnell, uh, he's, he's been a pleasant surprise for Ryder since he's gotten into camp. Uh, again, I think he came over from, from Archer City, and there was a little, uh, there's a little bit of doubt. Like, how could he hang? Was he the one? Could he really translate? And his quickness, I mean, it's been a difference maker in this game. He's a good player. Hand off to him again. He's going to put his shoulder down and uh, square up and another three yards. You know, kind of thinking as, as, as the quarter's going, Coach, give me some – as you were at Old High, I remember like the Old High South Lake game here. I remember going to Texas Stadium for Old High Ennis. Give me some of the fun games. That, you know, we kind of sit here and think about some of the past Kyle games you've been to or, or played. I know Ryder versus Everman in Texas Stadium, fun one. I mean – Okay. There's been a lot of fun games. Hershey, that Hershey old high one with the fumble was one of the ones I was on the third row down there watching that as even a kid student at Ryder. Right, a lot, a lot of memorable, uh, memorable games. Uh, one that, or a couple that stand out, the South Lake Carroll playoff game. Uh, the, Ennis, the Ennis game at Texas Stadium. But the, the big game for me would probably be the Ebony old high game in, in 2000. You know, just a, just a great game, great atmosphere. Uh, in a game that went down to the wire. And that was that was it at Everman? It was at Richie Hill. Okay, I think I listened to it on the radio here. So Isaac yeah. Padre caught a caught a yeah. touch down at the end of the game. It's fun hearing all those names. I mean, just you know, you go, going through it and there's so many, right? I mean, in yeah. the history of, of old and and, and Ryder too. And I'll be, I'll, I'll tell you right now, I came up with so many names for the Ryder. Like, I, I could have expanded Ryder's list to top, to, to top 40. I got to cut it somewhere, though. But, I mean, it, it could have it gone that far. And it's, it's the traditions at both sides. So, funny soccer story. I know we're talking a little soccer here, but Rob Daniel My boy was Rob. one of the biggest guys I think I've ever seen when I was a high school kid. And then he joined the old high soccer team. And, and could, I mean, just awesome football player, Great and then man. just Jeremy Weeks. I mean, just Jeremy Weeks, the guy who was on the ballot. He was on our ballot, and yeah. almost don't make it. He don't know. Did he just missed another one of those guys that just missed? The top forty was tough. The All American miss. The All American miss. The last All American in in, uh, <laughs> in old high history. Yeah. He, he was a beast. Best D tackle I've seen. Yeah, and, and, and again, another guy, he was, just, he was right there, close, but it, man, if you're dwindling to 40 and, you know, a hundred and something years of history. Did, did, did Arvis and Manski make your, your rider list? Uh, Blake made the list. Yeah. Blake did. And then uh, uh, Scott Szymanski from, from Hershey, late 80s, but he, he made the list as well. BJ missed it. But even in that time, you had the fun, like Jared Estes on the Hershey team. Yeah. Like those were, I mean. Jared Estes on the Hershey. Yeah. yeah. Reggie Robinson. Red, yeah. Red, Reggie was number 25 on the Marvin list. Thompson. Marvin did not make it. He didn't make he it. He should have. And, and, and that's when I have to admit I missed. I, I missed. I missed having his name on my ballot, and that's, that, that's on me. That's when I own and because he should be. Because they played Stevenville, what, two or three years in a row? Some battles <laughs> with those teams, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, that's oh, yeah. just. Steven, so, Stevenville in the history of, of, of WFISD football is just is inter, intertwined so much in the playoff history of all three teams. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, it's such, such a, it's, and it's Stevenville, too. I, I'm sure there's a lot of schools who feel that way about them. Stevenville and Brownwood, though, both, both schools. Just are again intertwined so much in the history. First, you played Brown with that year too. They did, yeah. I think two rounds before Stevenville, and that was kind of the big win. And that's when we flashed, you know, because I, I, I drew comparisons to that nine, because that was '98, right? Mm -hmm. To that '98 team, to that last, you know, not the last one, but to the uh, the two, two, yeah, mm -hmm. not the '21. Who was the one with the? Uh, no, 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 it was that one. Because there's the, the parallels there. Because you, you played Brownwood, you beat Brownwood in the close game, you end up going against Stevenville in the state semifinal. So there's a nice play there. Now, did Old High go beat? They went beat Brownville or Brownwood in 2000, right? They, yeah, yeah, they, they, they yeah. did. At, at SMU. Yeah. At SMU. It was a great game. I think I was at South Lake Carroll when Ryder beat Stevenville, I think. Bill Martin. 
that's why I'm hoping people show up these next this, these next few weeks. I mean, there's so much history here in the school district, and it'll be fun to make new history. But man, you can we could talk all night about these games and these guys. I mean, just player for player and legend for legend. Oh, nice jump. I don't know how that got through and got caught, but now you got the Coyotes out in the open field. Getting down the sideline to the 30, 20, one man to beat, and he will touch down old high Cameron Jones. There you go. Is that the quarterback? That is the quarterback. Nice. Let's see the replay here. 87 yards. Mm. So he brought back again. Oh, wow. Tipped that back to himself and gets loose. Like I said, 87-yard touchdown to give the Coyote faithful something to cheer about. Just playing a little bit of speed. And you see what that kid can do in the open field. Oh, That's yeah. what – and, and I, love, I love that he's out of receiver. Get I mean, again, get the best athletes, athletes on the field. The field. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And, you know, it wasn't always that way, right? Like, I, I feel like getting your best athletes on the field is kind of a mindset that, that football – had to come back around to, right? And and getting guys that could you know to that can contribute at more than one position because mm -hmm. you kind of specialize. I mean, even you. I mean, you, you play you play quarterback and you play quarterback. Could you? I mean, you would look back. Do you feel like you got, if you'd had an opportunity to contribute at another position, you probably could have. Well, they actually earlier. they actually used me as a as a pass rush defensive end. Okay. So I, I lined up against Ryder and, and rushed the passer. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, ever get a sack? No. <laughs> Not at all. Game's game's a little different back then, though. You guys weren't running the passing offense right. still, really, back when you played. So, Coyotes on the board, 41-7, to 7-15 left here in the, uh, in, the, in the game. I'm going to let you guys talk because I'm, I'm doing a little bit of work. I'm doing a little bit of work. There's always a deadline, all right? said Ojai makes trip to Hereford next week so I mean, yeah. then Ryder what do we have you get Decatur here Decatur. Decatur here okay that's what I'll be covering next week I'll be here and uh, I'll be here doing the broadcast I don't know who's joining me kind of live fly by the seat of my pants with that coach <laughs> Holly always welcome I like come back I didn't realize all three teams played Decatur yeah they do yeah that cool. did last year mm -hmm. uh, Decatur went three and oh Against well, no, wait, wait, Ryder, 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 Ryder got, 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 got away, yeah, yeah, got away, yeah. Yeah. yeah, stole one, and, and that was a that was a steal. That was because I remember you were you were doing the PA that night, coach, and you yeah. came over. We were watching the live stream. I was giving play by play of the Ryder Decatur game uh, on on this well, live stream. Here. Yeah, yeah, and, and the, they were playing Brock here, and the game ended early. Yeah, and we were so we were talking that one through. Well, no, no, no. It was the old high game that was here. Okay. Hershey Brock was on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. And then so the old high old high finished off the K, uh, Hereford, so we stayed on, on the air. And I did play-by-play play watching the, the the Decatur live stream of what was happening with Ryder. I mean, and, and then, you know, I'm just kind of – I'm just reminiscing here with 715 left, but like the Abusi family at old high, all, all three of those guys. I mean, her dad and the, the two sons. And like I said, they were fun to watch. But, I mean, I loved watching that. Y'all's y'all's teams with, with the Henderson. Right. I mean, said I went to Ryder and all that, but man, if, if y'all were in town, I was here. I just, you know, I'm a soccer guy, but football's my, my love. So. You know, it was pretty cool playing in the, in the rivalry and then getting to play with uh, Blake Morrison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that, that was the coolest thing. Blake yeah. was a, a good guy, was a, was a great player at MSU. It's Ryder again running through. We're letting this one really just kind of tick out. I mean, we just don't want to see anybody get hurt. At this point in the game, 41-7. to seven, so we got coming up under seven minutes now to play. I'm going to... You know, Duncan was right about it. I mean, this, like I said, with, with you, you don't remember really this game last year. If you're an old high fan, that, that run was incredible. and started playing well mid part of the year and defensively great and well, it was something that coach freeman said early on even before they scrimmaged hershey and he told me he's like listen we know we've got a really tough scrimmage against hershey we got a really tough game against Ryder, but there's not another game on our schedule that we don't feel like we can go out and win 
Yeah. And he feels that way again this year. And I think he feels that way about teams in the region, too. Yeah. I talked to him last year yep. a little bit as it got going, and he was like – legitimately chance in the region. The, 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 the goal is to go to state title game for the yeah. Coyotes. That's the goal. And, and it's a realistic goal. I mean, they were right there with with Decatur twice last mm-hmm. year. You know, and, and so that's it, it, it's there's, this doesn't have any merit on that. It really doesn't. This 41-7 loss it's going to go down and we're going to make a big deal about it, about the history of it and everything else. That's what we do in the media. We make a big deal out of things. Uh, so, but this is, and then this is, I don't want to like lessen this game at the same time. Obviously, it's a big deal. You see how many people are out here today. We know it's a big deal. And this this loss, it hurts. There's a lot of people hurting from this loss. I'm probably sitting next to one hurting a little bit from it. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> and, and you know, I think you said it too about this town being unique. You think, and I, I know there's been a little back and forth on why is the game this weekend. This is a big weekend for this city. I mean, big next couple of days, but the game here and everybody here and the hotter than hell tomorrow. I mean, this is it's, – it's a good town. It's a fun town, a lot of history in this town. Um, and just to see how many people were in town for these two events this year um, or this weekend is, is incredible. Yeah, you say it's fun. I'm saying it's exhausting. <laughs> i got to get up in the morning and be at the finish line for the hotter than hell. And, huh. Man. It comes, it comes so fast. And, and, like, I'll be up late, you know, trying to round up all these scores. And I say that. I, I do. I want to run down some, some final scores uh, going through it. So, um, real quick, some scores from tonight that have gone final. Uh, Winthor is beating Henrietta. They're up 37 to 28 now. They're in the third quarter. Vernon has beaten City View 40 to 20. Archer City beats Quanta 44 to 8. Because uh, I might wait for this play to, to get over with here. See what the Raiders do. They double stacked on each side. Going to throw it out quick here to uh, number 24. Makes a man miss and just have a short gain. That was Alex. i uh, going to apologize on the name. Alex Arginal on the catch. Uh, keep going down. Jacksboro, it's a nice rally. Again, they were down 26-6 at one point. They win 57-35 to over Breckenridge. Uh, Electra lost to Santo, 27-14. to I'll go and bring this one up since we talked about Decatur a little bit. They lost to Anna tonight, 37-30. to Burke Burnett be- beats Bridgeport, 48-7. to Seymour beats Anson, 40-14. to let me see what else. We brought up Brownwood, too. They beat Abilene Wiley tonight, 35-21. That's of some interest. Graham beats Bowie, 56-14. Turn around, handoff, going to the left side. There's some daylight for a young Ryder Raider. See Braylon Carey. Is that right, 48? Listen as a defensive lineman on the, uh, <laughs> on the roster. But yeah, he got a nice game for him. Of course, it's 41 to 7 here. Trying to see any other scores jump out at me real quick as I'm looking through. So we were talking a little bit earlier off the air about uh, Coach Antonio Wiley, former coach of the of the Hershey Huskies. He's a cop hell now. He's he was down earlier. He's up 34-27 on Saxy now. Nice. Nice job. We're seeing something out, out of the uh, the junior. Again, listed as defensive lineman. City View lost. I mentioned for forty to twenty to to uh, to burn. You know, kind of looking forward. You got coming up in September. You got Lubbock Cooper coming in with Ryder. You got Stephenville coming in. There's some big games. A lot of, a lot of good football. A lot of good football. Yeah. It, it, the last two years really have it, it. I do think last year's last year's stadium slate was the best that 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 they've had since I've been here. Last year's I mean because you had Hershey Brock and it, I mean, it was such a good slate. But no, yeah, Lubbock Cooper coming here. Of course, that's been such a good rivalry for Ryder the last few years. Uh, you know, their newest rival, if you will, and played so many meaningful games between those And, you know, it's going to be interesting going forward. We were talking district-wide, where are we going to be next year with the two new schools? Lubbock Cooper opening up a new school. There's a lot of new schools opening up. I mean, Decatur may go five. I mean, there's a lot of stuff happening around the area that – 
you kind of wonder where these two schools are going to land. Yeah, you just, you just don't know. Is that that's Stephen Mars senior in a quarterback, and he just did a keeper there running up the middle. We're coming up on 320 now left in this game, and Riders still leading 41-7. Uh, no, yeah, the new school, the, what happens there, I mean, is, you know, what what classification, of course, we're expecting a 5A D1 for both schools, so where does that put you in a district alignment? You know, I, I need to look at it a little bit more, but you, I think it's very possible you go, you do end up going back, you know, towards DFW uh, with, you know, the the uh, the Shermans of the world, I yep. think that's a possibility. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's hard to say, but at the same time, like what you know, you got very few West Texas schools that keep pulling us that way. Carry with another carry for a <laughs> picked up a good chunk of that third. That was redundant. Sixteen back. Yeah, I'll be fourth and uh, two. Expect Ryder to. Go I guess they could work on the field goal unit here if they wanted to. See how Kenji fares from this deep, but now you're not looking to add points necessarily either, so you're, you're wanting to tick this clock right. Right. Really kind of clean fourth. I think everybody's got out of here, knock on wood, with a couple minutes left, no injuries. You know what I mean? I think everybody left this thing pretty healthy. Free play for Ryder interception. Oh, nice. Got a nice play in. by Old High. But there's a... 25 Roman Lunsford, but they're, I think, maybe offsides on Old High. Yeah, that was a beautiful catch. Yes. Beautiful interception. First and 10 Old High, minute 57 left. Grab it back in, quarterback. Real quick, I want to. I do want to thank. It's, we have. So, this is such a good broadcast. It really is. It's a fantastic broadcast. I want to thank Chad Johnson. He really kind of puts all this together. Of course, you've been hearing he's the unofficial fourth man on this broadcast, uh, doing the PA stuff. But uh, he, you know, he he's the one. You know, we go through him. Uh, he does a great job as the more multimedia coordinator there at WFISD. His wife Christy Johnson is the coordinating producer. Uh, Kelsey Ranky is the uh, is, is the director uh, of this broadcast. David Cook, Alec. Ridingen and Sean Chenault doing the camera work. Guys, we're seriously so good on this broadcast. I get compliments about it all the time. Uh, it's easy to sound good when it looks this good. Fleeks with a first down on that last catch. Another first down for him on the far side. They get down there. Hey, you know, there ain't no reason not to go try and score again if you're old high. You, wanna, <laughs> you know? It's going to look deep. Going for fleeks again, going to overthrow him that time. Will be interesting, kind of, you know, this quarterback situation moving forward. I'll be interested to see what they do against Hereford next week. You saw, you know, saw flashes, I think, from both of them. I think the biggest thing is that you're not going to see a defensive line or a defense that's probably going to put as much pressure on them as what they faced tonight. With this yeah, right, Ryder's defensive front was pretty out pretty good. There to Jones again. He's fun to watch in the open field. I mean, he can. Yeah. And, and that may be what really comes out of this. You found him as a weapon that you're going to get in the open field like that. And, uh Opens up the playbook a little bit. A bit, a little bit. Athlete, right athlete like that. And I mean, he was the starting starting linebacker for them last year as, as a sophomore, so there is varsity experience there. Okay, number eight there. Beasley, first down run, coming up on a minute left. Coach, I know it's starting to end. Uh, a little emotion to it. Not, not, I, mean, I, I mean, I know you're just not going to be able to say Ryder and Old High anymore. I mean, get, getting to play in so many. Uh, it, it is hard. For, I know the closing of these schools is so hard mm -hmm. because of the history of the I mean, but. 
it, it, it's not, you know, to, to me, like, memories, history, legacies, they last forever. Been going yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's going to be there. And it's going to be fun. I mean, it's, it's it, you, you know, you hate to lose it, but it's, 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 it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to... I hope the first game next year between Legacy Memorial has a crowd like this. That's like this. Yeah, I mean, it should be two years in a row like this out here. 30 seconds left, second down, old high. Takes on a defender, picks up about eight yards. Clock's still going to run, 22 seconds left. Old High looking to score here. Oh, yeah, they're going to try to give Keep going one. for it, yeah. Hey, you got fans up there that, that have stayed for this whole thing, so you, uh, you owe them a little something. Beasley with a run, third down. Six seconds left. Trying to go, Old High's going to try to get one more playoff here. Going to Fleeks in the corner. Touchdown, Old Eye. What a catch yeah. by Keandre Fleeks. That was a 14-yard touchdown to end the game. Old High will kick the extra point. What a catch there by Fleeks. So, well, we yeah. Got to see. We didn't get to see enough yeah. of his yeah. talent down the field. Make sure we tried that a little <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ryder has something to do with why <laughs> they didn't know. And well, I guess we're not doing the extra point yeah. referees. Yeah, and you, you, the game is, is over. The the extra off. Point, yeah, the extra point doesn't matter, yeah. and so that's why it's over. If the extra point had any significance, they would have kicked it, so that's going to be it, though. Well, guys, I enjoyed this. Really did. I'm, I'm glad both of you joined me up here. I appreciate you doing it. I appreciate it, man. Uh, appreciate but it, it's, uh, hey, it is. It is. This is it. Ryder wins the final Ryder Old High matchup. They'll go out in the series all time with a 41 18 and 3 advantage in the series. Tenth straight win in the series as well. So, uh, again, thanks again to this broadcast crew. Fantastic job for Coach Holly, for Coach Bell. I'm Jonathan Hull. And uh, tune in next week. We'll have uh, on the live stream Old High versus Herb. Sorry, Ryder versus Decatur. Man, let's end this thing on a mistake. I, I mean, thanks to the crowd. Before, before yeah, we yeah, did, yeah, I mean, do the that Incredible too, yeah. crowd, great everything. I said, support your town, hotter than hell tomorrow. Get out, support that. I mean, just enjoy the city this weekend. Yeah, yeah great, great. Stuff going on. Yeah. Hope to see you guys all all year here out of Memorial Stadium. <laughs>